I'm just, you know, trying to find a place with like-minded people to talk about like-minded things about me, about poop and stuff. Hey, Poopy, how you doing? Hey, Poopy, how you doing? Oh, man, what's this right here? Is this, this a podcast about poop? And now, Shooting the Shit with Dave and Ellen. Ah, uh, yes. We're hey, back. everybody. We are back. Well, uh, for them, we're not. Well, yeah, I mean, we're going, this is like are. real time for us, but yeah. not for you out there listening. <laughs> we always drop an episode once a week because we never want to leave you guys hanging. But sometimes Dave and I don't see each other for weeks on end. Yeah. So we're seeing each other for the first time in like two weeks, maybe. It's true. But it's great. Yeah. It's like you kind of like... Um, you get to sort of like be excited again. Exactly. You know? It's like having a vacation from life. Yes. But we're having a vacation for the poo. <laughs> never poop. Vac- I never Poops vacation for my poo. <laughs> well, I'm sure you have some stories <laughs> 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 to um, regale us with. Uh, hey, everybody. This is Shooting the Shit with Dave and Ellen. And this is episode 35. Four. 35? Four? 30, oh, my God. I think Buttcom was 33. Gorgeous is 34, oh, right. right? Yeah, this is 35. And now we have... We should know the numbers of these guys. This is why I write it down. <laughs> no, you did, you're right. I'm sorry. It is 35. I'm sorry. This is episode 35. About, yeah. And we have a guest today, Mr. Matt Knife. Yes. Hi, everybody. How's it Yay. going? Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, Thank thanks you. for having me. I'm excited. And um, we can go into more things about our life and being away for a couple of weeks but let's go into our check-in yes because the check-ins it's all about how is your poops today it's or cus- even recently well it's be. customary because our guests always go first yes. so yeah, we oh well know. no this is hilarious because i have the bristol stool chart ready for you so you can describe it in number okay well the i would say i had a i had a six Ooh. uh get last night i think you guys jinxed me Ooh. honestly shit <laughs> because i went to uh dinner in park slope with some friends and my husband cubby and as we were walking home things started shifting around Uh-oh. and then I got about two blocks from my house and I was like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to make it. And I didn't. Oh. So, <laughs> you pooed your pants? I did. Yeah. Oh my oh, God. Wow. Last the first night. Wow. That's a first poo your pants check in. Last night. Wow. Out the gate. <laughs> yeah. Oh like I, well, I know, just the whole time. Were you time. talking at dinner about being on the podcast yes. and being nervous? Yes. And no, then I wasn't nervous, but yeah, I was talking about it because wow. I'm super excited. But oh yeah, my god! Like, yeah, so I think That's I think crazy. the universe, my my butt loves attention, <laughs> and so I think that it was just like it was like, nope, you're going into this with with a fresh story. <gasps> so because it was funny because I ran and um, I got into my house before anyone else did, and I was automatically just went in the shower, washed <laughs> washed my shorts, washed my underwear yeah. uh, I was wearing sandals so luckily I didn't have to like change oh my, my shoes God. or anything like that which I have had that happen <laughs> yeah I've talked about that on my accident and um, <laughs> it was but it was just so funny because I'm like okay all right I get it my ass is a diva so wow. I guess it had to have like its moment you know that's so. definitely a first for the show mm-hmm. like right out the gate I right just want to say thank you so much for bringing that that is not only a first, but I feel so beyond like touched because I know we've had people on this show who's like, no, I've never pooped my pants. And not only have you did it, but in less than 24 hours. Less than 24 yeah. hours. I, yeah. Matt and I, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. You know, it's like I've I've been <laughs> that giver. person. For you are a, lot a giver. Of I try. I try. <laughs> but you know what? It's it's funny because like I actually had this happen um, a few summers ago. Like I, that was the story I was going to tell I don't know if we're at that phase of the podcast yet but um it was so like humbling (laughs) you know because I'm like I'm like I'm a 30 something year old man who pooped my pants because I mean I really do think that poop is the great equalizer like whenever anybody Mm -hmm. is giving me shit or you know I mean I'm a costumer so sometimes I've been backstage or I've been in fittings with people that are famous or 
<clears throat> excuse me, well known. And you know, you always get nervous. Like you're you're like, what are you gonna do? You know, I'm in a fitting with Tom Ford. Like, what am I gonna do? And I was like, you know what? Tom Ford has to poop. He does. So yeah. and then I'll just look them right in their eyes and I'm like, Okay, you have to poop. All right, you're a person. That's that. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure they've pooped their pants at some point. Oh, oh 100%. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, I mean, I just think it happens. Yes. So, you know. It is a great equalizer. It yeah. is. Everybody does it. Yep. yep. So, but thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> coming, in, coming in hot with that one. <laughs> a hot yeah. number. A, a yeah. hot type six. Yeah. Wow. Hot six. <laughs> Wow. Borderline. I feel like we should be giving him an award for that. Like, like you need people like that deserve awards. There's two stickers here. (laughs) It's so funny because we were just talking about burlesque awards. It's like, I will happily accept um, this shooting the shit sticker. Uh, from heypoopypodcast.com Thank you. Yes. As I just Welcome. plugged, see, I will nice. happily accept this. I would, like, plug. I would like to thank the scallops that I ate last <laughs> night. And Damn I was seafood. I would love to thank my my anus publicly because I love it and it gives me a lot of pleasure <laughs> and it provided me with a hilarious story. God so. bless. An, am, an amazing check in. Oh. That was a great check in. Makes my check in sound just terrible. Well, <laughs> since we're on that, what? How was your? <laughs> Oh, your poops. Um, I was on vacation last week at a thing called, that was called camp that um, Matt's been on. I'm so sad I couldn't be there. I know. It looked like a, looked like a blast. It, it was always so, all literally blast. a blast. All the fun um, stuff. But because it's it's like family dinners and traveling and all the rest of it, I made sure to take a stool softener most of the nights <laughs> because I was like, pure for men can't even help me with this problem. I'm just going to make sure the drugs, the alcohol, the everything. So I made some beautiful shits there and we were staying in this three-story log cabin in the Poconos that had a real bidet. The Poconos. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. The, the poop canos. <laughs> <laughs> Poconos. But the real bidet was fucking useless i ended up using my um travel tushy because even gerald said it like my boyfriend he was like so you take a shit in the toilet and then then with your shitty ass you have to move a foot over and i was like i'm i agree with you so travel tushy was so much better than the Mm -hmm. real fancy bidet it's like this giant streak of shit yeah (laughs) like ellen's been in here again yeah (laughs) so i made up do uh made good dues when i was there thanks to stool softener and then um because we also ate a lot of gluten i ate a lot of gluten-free pasta there were a couple pasta nights um but then the last night I was like I shouldn't or the second to last night I was like I shouldn't eat stool softener because we're going tubing the next day and I don't oh, want to yeah. shit in the, in the, in river. the river we were on the river for the minimum like three and a half hours oh, and yeah. there was a wanna... video that I posted on my private Instagram that Dave saw of me using my shiwi and peeing <laughs> off the side of the raft <laughs> like a boy and everybody was like yeah check it out Owen's peeing shiwi that's yeah, the funniest sh- name shiwi the shiwi yeah. oh is that like one of those uh, piss funnel things yeah. for ladies yeah. Yeah. okay yeah i've seen those at burning man it's like, the best yeah <laughs> it's i could see that yeah, yeah. did you and buy that just for this trip no 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 i keep it in my car actually oh, nice. just in case of an emergency nice okay and like sometimes Smart. like it's a pain in the ass to be a lady and squat and then you pee all over your shoes yeah. and whatever and the shiwi Although is suck. awesome <laughs> and the shiwi that i have like has that extension tube so you're you're it's like a good six inches was, you're peeing I, away I, from yourself. When you showed me what it looked like, I thought it looked like, it reminded me of what I imagine like a frat house would have like those funnels. Uh-huh. <laughs> just chugging beer. beer. Oh, and yeah. or like in NASCAR, they have those like gas funnels they just throw into the back of the car. I'm sure cats. there's porn for that. Oh, I'm sure. You know there is. Like <laughs> the Shiwi. Oh my God, that's hilarious. I'm yeah, seeing Ellen peeing in the... Out in the in great the wide open. Yeah, Were you you're tripping just your balls like, off. No, 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 I wasn't. I just had like, I yep. had a lot of drugs the day before, and like so I was a... exhausted. And there was a moment where I was like, I don't even think I'm going to be able to do this tubing thing. And I was like, just rally and just let's get it done. Okay. I had two uh, spike seltzers stream. on the yes. tube, and then fell asleep like the last half an hour. It's so much to the point where like Boo Boo was like, you need to get up. It, no, not me. But she was like, everybody, we're coming to the end of this tubing. If you want to um, jump in the river, this is the last like moment you can yeah. do it. And I was just like bounced up like, yeah, let's do this. And I just jumped off the side of the raft. Totally forgot I had my sunglasses and hat on. Lost my sunglasses. Thank <laughs> God they were like 
cheapy free ones and then my hat started floating away from me and i was like fuck i gotta get my hat but um yeah yeah <laughs> well you look really tan oh and thank you so well yeah definitely river. camp is not a vacation it's a family experience yeah and it's very busy and as our dear friend josh dean says camp is one of those places where it's hard to figure out where you're gonna sleep like when you're gonna sleep oh yeah that's yeah. right yeah so okay. it's very busy it's it's so much fun nice gerald did not make it to the rafting because he was so hung over from doing a massive amount of drugs and alcohol the day before. oh really oh yeah. shit okay yeah <laughs> That's why we did the group photo in bed because he didn't get out of bed. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he's like, no. I saw the group shower too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The group oh, shower. That was pretty fun. They were all on drugs outside, I think in the hot tub. And then all of a sudden you could see all four of them run up and I was like, I know what they're doing. And so me and Boo Boo ran after them with video cameras oh my God. to watch the group yeah, shower. That was, a, that was a group shower. It would have very much have been like it, <laughs> it was the dirtiest, cleanest shower I've ever seen because they all kept their swimsuits on but also we're using soap <laughs> yeah that's what i said in the video too that was pretty funny i'm like well those clothes clothes are clean yeah it was so funny Aww. i was like oh you you positive little perverts <laughs> <laughs> you consider it little perverts yeah well i'm glad you had a good time it was a blast nice. um and then I also realized from my check-in that the magnesium i was taking isn't there's two different kinds of magnesiums you can take pill form and the one i was taking wasn't helping with my poops it was just helping like there's one that helps with poops and one that doesn't so i ordered the one that helps with poops and i took two of those with two pure for men at night and i have been making the most colossal hugest <laughs> most del- not delicious uh, <laughs> that's a different podcast yeah. most, not, like, not insane, podcast. Oh my God. like eliminations and i've been feeling so light these past couple of days. Cool. I feel so light. So Angry magnesium and pure for men is like keeping keeping you um yeah. Especially with all that gluten free pasta I clean. ate last week. Yeah. But I relate to the camp poops. Like, you know, some of those like meals, like you just want to eat everything because it's so good. Like yeah. everybody just makes like all this to like, v- like Velocity's voodoo night. Yeah. Like, I mean, I was just like, but then afterwards, I mean, it's like, it was like a swimming party that one year. And I was just like, all right, whose idea was it to put the swimming party right after voodoo night? Like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, we're going to die. Like it was awful, but then it was Ugh. fine. It's like you're literally on pin cushions. Yeah. That swimming party I completely blacked out from because <laughs> Velocity ended up making me buy the Dark, dark and Stormies uh-huh. for everybody. And it was out of my own pocket. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to drink these. And I had a pitcher of Dark and Stormy. Ooh, my favorite. And I don't remember anything in the pool because I Damn. got shit faced. Wow. 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 Did you pee in the pool? <laughs> They're like, LMP No, I did. I, 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 I don't <laughs> care how drunk I am. I will never pee in a pool. But I don't remember much else. Okay. Dave, um, how have your poops been? I'm pretty good. Nothing like, you know, pretty normal. I've been taking my um, Pure for Men. Yeah. I noticed when I don't take it, everything's a lot looser. Oh, so it's been but, binding. Uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. Oh, yeah. my God. Great. I like it. I like it. I'm having some pretty yeah, good... Yeah, Dave is more of a loose in the caboose kind of pooer. <laughs> and the Pure for Men's great because it, it like pushes it out, but it like packs it together. Mm-hmm. Which I think is like the best combination of a of a well, it's suppul- got two supplement. kinds of fibers. It's got insoluble and soluble. I forgot which one does this, but like one binds and one does like a scrubbing. Yeah, like, listen you know, to that episode, power, everybody. Power yeah. cleanser. <laughs> yeah, on the way out. So, so. It like get pushes it all out, but keeps yeah. it together. in the, like in a nice like little yeah. tight. Yeah, you have, like, beautiful. Fiber, yeah. 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 Beautiful men is fantastic. I mean. We talk about it so fucking much you would think we're sponsored by them, but we are not. Well, we but have we, a promo code. We have a promo code, but we are very... You would we think we very, were sponsored by Tushy, too. I mean, yeah. we just it's need okay. more listeners, and then maybe we could get sponsored yeah. we'll by see. these people. That's, that's, another, that's another conversation. It's yeah. funny for me because, like, Pure for Men comes up a lot in the gay community because, you know, it's, like, good yeah. for anal sex. Hashtag like, stay I mean, ready. Yeah, so you can, like, you know... 
clean out faster and stuff like that. So it's just funny to me that it's like you guys are talking about it. Two well, straight like, people. Not, two straight people but talking it's ba- about it. It's basically, it's a fiber supplement. Really. Yeah, I mean, I mean, absolutely. Like, I mean, it's it's kind of the equivalent of like a man bun. Like, yeah. it's like at the end of the day, it's it's just a bun. Like, yeah. it's a supplement yeah. for poop. But it so works like great, anyone though. can take it. But I, I just love that you're both are t- oh, yeah. <laughs> talking we about it. We love it. it. Like, we, we were like, we had the best conversation with Lawrence. Oh, my God. He was around. fantastic. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, go out there and get that. Um, you use promo code. What is it again? I think it's uh, Hey Poopy Twenty for twenty yeah. percent off. Twenty percent off of uh, Pure for Men I'll or Pure for Her. Or yeah. if you don't want to try any of that stuff, you can get the body scrub. You can get the soap. You can get the wipes. They have so many different kinds of products that are, are wonderful. Do they do the dude wipes? Yeah, they okay. can do yeah. their own version of they're dude black. wipes now. Yeah, and they're black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they smell great. The, the, yeah. the man bun of 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 butt care. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Then I guess I'm a man. I guess I have a man bun in my ass. <laughs> but um, yeah, again, back to my, my poops were pretty normal. I mean, I just a couple of days I forgot to take my pure for men, and it was like, you know, it was still decent, but you know. I now officially have been putting binding. my pure for Bound. men in with my nighttime supplements. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm like, fuck it. Switch Instead it of remembering yeah. to take it, might as well. I just yeah. put it like, yeah, I just have it right above our um, our kitchen. So in the morning, it's like, take it. But uh, yeah, loved it. Yeah. Love it. Yes. Say. So um, anyway. So let's get into our theme. Matt Knife, tell us a little bit about yourself. About myself. Well, I am a burlesque performer and a producer. I produce Homo Erectus Boylesque, which is at uh, home, uh, which is at Stonewall Inn. It's every second Saturday. We just had our show. The legendary this Stonewall. The legendary Stonewall. Historic yeah. Stonewall. And it's uh, we've been working there for seven years, and yeah. I'm very honored. It's been we had Pride 50 this last Pride, which was super fun, and nice. we had a good time. And um, I'm also a visual artist. I paint. Um, I do a lot of acrylic portraits emotional landscapes i really like painting um naked bears like uh (laughs) fat hairy men are usually the thing i like i gravitate towards um but you know i've been branching out and doing a lot more stuff like non-erotic stuff um i do have some very butt focused art um because i am a butt guy you have to send us pictures to post on our instagram oh i'll do that promote your art yeah absolutely and um I just had my 10 year uh, New York City anniversary. I've lived here for 10 years. Nice. Uh, which is kind of weird because I feel like that is a milestone. Um, so that's been kind of been putting a lot of things in perspective because I've had to think about it's like, oh, when we first moved here, which doesn't feel like 10 years ago. And I'm like, yeah, it goes by quick in the city. Yeah, it does. So, but then it also crawls by at the same like yeah. time. It's very weird. But, um, you know, I kind of, I'm a costume designer. I, that's my education's in costuming. So I, I sew and I do uh, design stuff as well. Um, so I'm kind of just a general all around artist. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Um, you should definitely check out Matt's work. Yes. It's pretty amazing. Thank I love you. the face peels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are, I love when you always do like print, print, with the reveal. It's so cool. Uh-huh. I've been more, I've been making a ton of those lately um, because I'm doing the raw artist uh, showcase on the 27th. Is it? I don't remember. I have to 26. I believe it's Wednesday. No, it's awesome. Exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. I mean, any opportunity to put your art up on a wall is, I mean, yeah. Ellen, I'm sure you know what that's totally. like. Both of you actually, because yeah. you're both photographers. Yes. Yeah. So you guys know what that's like. I no, mean, it's, it's I um, love it. Yeah. I mean, it's just nice and it's validating and you know, it's like you can celebrate all that hard work you do like behind the scenes. One other plug is I'm also doing the American Horror Story viewing party uh, starts on Wednesday at Rock Bar. Um, and uh, Jason and I are going to be uh, just doing commentary during the commercial. And cool. I'll oh, cool. probably do an American Horror th- a Story theme. What day is that start? It's Wednesday. It's on the 18th. Oh, like okay. 10, I believe. That cool. so scares me. Oh, I love it. I, really, I, love I watched it. the year that um, Matt Frazier was in uh, the Freak Show. Um, that yeah. was so good. But yeah. even then, I was like, this is too much for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it can be a little over the top sometimes. Yeah. Like, I'm not really into gore. Yeah, I mean, like, so that's not the part that appears to me but I just like the story and the character it's a cool show but I just, I just, it's hard for me to watch some of that I'm like Oof. I understand that you know should we go into some um, questions yeah 
Unless you have something else to tell us about pooping your pants last night. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of it. You know, I mean, I had another pooping my pants story, as I said, from a couple of uh, summers ago. It's like a half story. It's not like a big epic story. But um, I was hanging out with my drag mother, world famous Bob, and she was moving away from New York. So she had like a bucket list of things she wanted to do. And so she wanted to take me out to I think it was Williamsburg or Greenpoint where they have kayaking. Mm-hmm. And and so uh, we went and the kayaking, it either wasn't happening or we decided against it, but we just ended up sitting and talking mm-hmm. because like, I mean, she's an Aries, I'm a Gemini, so you get us together and the two of us like just, yeah, it's wonderful. And so we went and we had uh, like brunch afterwards and, you know, they were just serving us these giant glasses of iced tea. And I mean, Bob really likes iced tea. So I'm sitting there just like enjoying it and drinking it with her. And we were done. And I got on the on the G train, and you know I could kind of feel some things shifting around, oh, no. and I'm like, okay, I'm <laughs> definitely gonna have to go to the bathroom when I get home. And then I got to my neighborhood, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to get home. Like I actually got out right here, like right where we are. Oh, okay. And so I'm walking down like Vanderbilt, and you know, I was like, I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be this is gonna be a photo finish. I just, <laughs> I just know it. It's gonna be bad. So I got to my street, and then I started to run. Managed to get the door open, shut the door, and the second I shut the door, I was wearing these short, short shorts, like because it was summertime. Oh my god! And the it was just so funny because it was like the back of it just exploded, <laughs> and then it just went down my leg oh, and into no. my shoes. And I was just like, oh my God, like, I am so glad that this happened, like, right when it happened. Like, because at least I was, like, behind closed doors if in my you were own on the home. subway? Oh my God, it would have been, I have nightmares about that, honestly. Oh my God. Like, because I've, um, I, when I worked at this costume shop in Midtown, there was a girl that used to commute in every day from Jersey, and she, she came in, and she was very sensitive to, like, medical stuff, so, like, whenever there was any kind of, like, you know, human waste or vomiting yeah. or anything like that, she'd get really triggered and uncomfortable but like not like in an adult way about it but she just came up to me and she goes oh my god Matt I just saw my worst nightmare and I was like what's that and she's like there was this like this really nice lady like dressed up like in a suit and she just had shit running down her leg like because I guess she had had you know and I was like could you imagine like she probably commuted in from Jersey and was like gonna go to like whatever like you know cubicle or office or high power whatever yeah and you know and there you are like what are you gonna do it in like Penn Station you know I go back home (laughs) right yeah Yeah. she had her power suit on it turned to a poo suit yeah Yeah. I felt so I didn't see that but you know but it was still it was again it's just like right to the shower and you just hose off all your clothes and you know that's where my shower attachment since we're talking about butt care you know I'm a big advocate of cleaning out with a shower attachment and but that's where it does come in handy is because you could just take that shower attachment and just blast out your clothes <laughs> and then just throw them in the and the washer oh and my it's like, god well but, you have a bidet too I've been yeah. at your house and I used it yeah <laughs> yes I always I talked about bidet. that well, a you have an actual episodes. bidet no, yeah. no, no 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 like a tushy oh, yeah. tushy. Okay, it's not a tushy but it's a it's a it's off a, brand it's, yeah, yeah, some, something yeah like yeah but yeah when i went and hung out with matt like about a month or so mm-hmm. ago he was like by the way we have a bidet and then we ate lunch and then as i was done with lunch i turned to him and i go i'm going to go use that bidet right now <laughs> They're gonna go, tear like, the, they're gonna go tear up your toilet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, Go ahead, honey, there's matches right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, keep the door shut. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a small apartment, so that's like whenever anybody stays at my house, like for any extended power it looks like the only rule I have in my house is if you poop, you have to shut the door, turn the fan on, and light a match. And then when you leave, shut the door because otherwise Yeah, it just that, goes everywhere. It just it's it's everywhere and then it's embarrassing. So it's like I'd rather and it's tell like you New York city a lot of apartments with bathrooms we don't have windows in them you do dave you're lucky i don't you don't don't so like yeah we you have to do a lot of stuff to get that smell to go somewhere yeah (laughs) so (laughs) uh, (laughs) um yeah that's that's unfortunate but you know 
I like that rule though. It's good. Yeah, well, I mean, I just kind of feel like, you know, get it out of the way, like when you can laugh about it, as opposed to like when somebody walks out and you're like, um, so next time, like, cause nobody likes to be shamed about pooping, yeah. you know? I mean, cause it's like nobody really wants to think about, you know, the other person doing it. So I feel like if it was like, if I had my own place, if I like lived, and there was like a bunch of dudes staying here. It'd be like just like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? It stinks in here. Like there, yeah. there'd be no like sort of like <laughs> polite way of going. It'd be like this turn into this complete like ribbing like all day. <laughs> Which reminds, you know I've done that. So <laughs> that reminds me, I totally forgot with my check in, but I wrote it on the uh, private Facebook page that um, I went to Target over the weekend, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I like was like. Get, getting stuff had my shopping cart full and I was like I gotta pee really bad so I run into the bathroom to pee and I was like ooh do I have to poop and I was like nah you don't have to poop it's okay <laughs> so I left and as soon as I got out and got my shopping cart I was like nope you do have to poop turn right back around and it's that huge target bathroom with like 15 <laughs> stalls yeah. And I swear to God, so much of my insides fell out into that Target bathroom <laughs> Your to the lower point GI where I was like hanging out. <laughs> I was more above the water than <laughs> under the water, oh and it smelled so bad. But it kept coming out of me. I flushed halfway through, and more came out. And I was like, I can't even be embarrassed for myself. There's all these people in the bathroom. They smell this wretched thing that just came out of me. But Ugh. I know Dave's, but it's the bathroom, Dave's giving me a sh- total shade yeah. right now. <laughs> I love that guy. I'm so glad you have that as a drop now. Um, but yeah, it was intense. So yes, I am that person who blew up that Target bathroom. I mean, that's that used to be such a thing for problematic for me going in public. Yeah, I mean, like I, I would just, I would just, I would like, I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna wait till I get home, yeah. and like the pain, and just no matter where I was, I'm like, I'll just have to deal with this because I can't. And like now, I'm like, oh fuck this. Like, no, I, no, I would, I, I would have shit my before, pants. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. it, it just, I mean, the amount of times I've held it, like it's insane. Like I've never, I mean, I've haven't shit my pants more than I have mm-hmm. <laughs> in life. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would have shit my pants in that Target easy. Yeah. It was coming out of me. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I mean, oh that, my God. that went from a, do I have to go to the bathroom to, oh my God. Yeah, turn, yeah, around, yeah. turn right like, around. Epic, Oof. epic story. Yeah. Oh a God. full elimination. Full, full. <laughs> Very full. Two flusher full. Oh my God. <laughs> I've had those. Well, now you think, you're getting me thinking, Matt, about your attachment. I want to get one of those for our, for our shower now. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah what I like exactly what I is it? Well, it's... um. Uh, I I recommend it's like anybody that's in into anal sex at all, whether you're a top or a bottom, or I just kind of feel like if you're just a sexual adult, you should have one because even if I'm going to someone else's house, I always feel a lot better when I know they have one because I'm like, okay, like just in case you gotta touch up a little bit, like you know. <laughs> um, but oh, it is um, it's just a hose that connects to the shower the head and. And then there's usually diverters, so it goes from um, coming out of the shower head or going in out of the hose. And then at the end of the hose, I prefer to get one that's long enough so that you could squat, um, because that usually, like you know, it's because your colon then straightens out, and so uh, your rectum, and uh, and it has just like a nozzle. And um, my husband just got me a new one, which I love because it's metal, oh. and. Um, <laughs> I, mean, it's, I don't know there's something like it's nice about it because it's easier to clean off and it's uh that that heaviness of it is kind of pleasurable oh and um you Wait, what just, is it called though it's just a shower they call them shower shot shower attachment I um look this up. yeah like i'm it, it's uh they're pretty like they sell them on amazon they're like 40 bucks like they sell so them it's basically at sex kind store. of like a version of that one head that like goes from a regular shower to like you know, it's got the different kinds of like settings on it. Yeah, but it's yeah. Like, this oh, is just a straight I see hose. what it yeah. is. Okay. Well, it's, it's like it's called like a shower bidet. Oh my god, there's one that's a dick shaped. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, those are well. 
the actual <laughs> end. Oh yeah, Ellen, that would be nice. This literally, this picture Ellen is showing us right now <laughs> is a it's a fucking dildo. Yeah, it happens to be a um, hose attachment. Yeah, no, the actual. <laughs> you gotta hose, take a screen grab of that. The actual <laughs> nozzles that come with it are a little less. Uh, so I is mean, it they're like phallic it's kind of like it's, an yeah, but then it's enema? A literal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's more like that. Yeah. But it's like a a power hose, a yeah. power enema yeah and you know usually you know i squat down and i let i fill it up until it feels like you're about to have diarrhea and then i i go to the toilet and i usually evacuate that first because that's the bulk of it okay and then i go back to the shower and usually whatever comes out of me at that point is uh small enough to just go down the drain because we don't have like i mean you have to be mindful of what kind of drain you have which uh, speaking of camp trying to at poo talk trying to do shout at poo talk was not fun because they're drains did not have no i was like i was like all right i can't do this here or at least in the way that's more comfortable but yeah i mean it's like on a bad day i would say i can be ready in like 20 minutes wow and that's a bad day like there's been other days where it's like i go in and like five minutes later i'm like i'm good i just realized that you're taking this thing putting it up your ass oh yeah <laughs> i thought it was just like <laughs> i just thought it was like a little hose like like you know you have like at the end of no. like like you're in your kitchen no, like you shoot spray the water some, like, in your hole <laughs> oh my God. so that your so butthole is nice and clean for rimming I, and i and literally thought, fucked and and oh, um and fisting that so. makes way more <laughs> sense i thought it was like the thing like you know you clean out some some grit off your dishes <laughs> like you know like that i'm like oh i should get one of those that sounds yeah. nice i didn't realize it was a whole thing yeah <laughs> Because I was like, you see, <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about filling up with? Like, I'm like, oh my god! Yeah, because that's Jeez. when you were like, it's I like might an enema. Get one of those. I was like, I was like, oh really? <laughs> I totally <laughs> thought it was something like, that you and Tiny Dio no, do in the bathroom. No, I, th- I thought it was like a complete like little spray, <laughs> like a garden hose, like yeah, thing. But you but can like, use it that way. No, but like, that's yeah, what, I just, absolutely. I thought it was like more like just surface, like not. <laughs> I've used it for when I've been like dyeing fabric or things like I'm, that too. So, I mean, it has like other purposes. I you am, can also unscrew the nozzle and put like a different, like a shower head on right, it right, so that you can like, you know, hold it and wash your balls. I am and, in, I'm, I'm in this corner over here, not a head going, mm-hmm, that sounds totally. Then I'm like, we said like. You didn't figure that out with the dick? I, I, thought that was, I thought that was like a funny, no, I thought it was like, oh, it's like a funny, like just hose it and I'm like oh that's going up your ass I this just- one this one is called the colt shower shot from enemasupply.com oh my god <laughs> oh it's a black dick yeah <laughs> Holy the best shit. kind cold <laughs> um, I that was like the funniest thing I really was like I'm like oh okay there's some kind of new hose thing I'm like I literally had no idea that's what you're doing oh my god it. for our hundredth episode I'm buying you one of these <laughs> I was just like what yeah like, I'd what? be interested to um <laughs> to hear your experience with right. with just douching your ass out <laughs> like I mean just for the experience of it I mean not I necessarily do, yeah like, I mean I've, I've had a I've had a colonic before mm-hmm. um it was a little uncomfortable. I started yeah. being like, whoa. I think that's a little different. I mean, this one's more or less like that first flush I told you about, right. I do hold in because right. like, you know, it just, uh, the, and then again, you know, you get the bulk out, but then that second flush, it's it, more just like, like, yeah, you let it come out as fast as it's going in. Right, right. Like, so it's like, and a, then like a power wash at nice. that point. Oh my God. I really yeah. thought it was like, just like, oh, it's like that, the massage setting on my shower head that could just like, Watch over my neck. I'm like, oh, this is kind of a longer one or something. You clearly <laughs> forgot who you were talking. Yeah, like to. I did. I mean, I sound, <laughs> I sound like someone's like some some father or something. Like, oh, it sounds pretty cool. I'm I like, feel like <laughs> the dick really should have cool given one. it away. No, I know. Well, the dick. <laughs> no, well, that's when I started doing like a cap with I'm like, wait, that's actually going up an ass. We need mm-hmm. to get you one that's in the shape of a vagina somehow. <laughs> That'd be even funnier. Instead sort of jam it up there, I'm like, this won't go. It won't fit. It's not fitting. <laughs> Yeah, but you don't need it to fit. No, just to I spray thought, the I water. I thought the dick thing was like attached. Was like a gag one. I'm like, oh, it's kind of funny. It's like a dick, like yeah. shower head. I'm like, you oh, you're get actually them using that, that aren't dicks too. I mean, just for the record, like, oh. I mean, I, I actually had never seen the ones with dicks until they you do, just pulled they that They do have out. penis, non penis. Yeah. You guys just reminded me of another story. I forgot. I'm not naming names, but you could probably guess who this person is at camp because I just don't want to out this person. That's fine. But I was high on mushrooms and they were high on LSD and I was like, do you want to go up to the bathroom and bidet yourself? And he, and they were like, yes. And so I watched this person. I'll tell you off, uh, Mike. I watched them bidet themselves and I did the tushy and they did the like the regular yeah. normal.
normal bidet and they were like "Ooh, this is turning me on i'm really liking it i was helping with the like what i totally almost forgot that i this have to happened. know who this is later yeah, yeah. i, I have had a me. bonding experiment right, have, right, where right, i have a hope it's one specific person no, no, but no, that no. might just be my fantasy no 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 it's, so. it, you know, as soon as I write it, you're going to be like, oh, yeah. Of this course. one identifies as a man or a woman? This person is a man. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah, he was okay, there? I didn't yeah, know he was that, there. No, no, not the one oh. you're thinking of. <laughs> that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. <laughs> but, yes. But, so, uh, yes, I can I, I can totally forgot it. until now because I was like, oh, my God, it'd be so funny to, like, bidet, I mean, enema bidet each other. And then I was like, oh, wait, I just did that like a week ago. Yeah, I was high as fuck. Yeah, because I would have been like, mm. yeah. But we were just like <laughs> sitting around bonding and talking about stuff. And I was like, do you want to go bidet each other? And he's like, yes. And I was like, let's, I was like, let's do have this. A bidet. Let's have a bidet. So I was like, that was like my first. Uh, and I, Gerald was like high on something. And like, this person is also a gay man. So I think Gerald, if it was a straight man I brought up there, Gerald would have been like, what the fuck are you guys doing? But Gerald was like, oh, whatever. They're bidetting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! That oh was God, hilarious. That's so funny. I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to do that. With I don't think else. I'd be that. High. I think yeah. no matter how high I was, I'd be like, no, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how the kind of person I am. Yeah, you, you, you. I'm I bonding mean, with my friends yeah. over psychedelics and bidets. I could yeah. see that. I could see that. <laughs> I'm so. I would sad bidet I with there. you, that Matt. Be, that would be a um, cool band name. Psychedelic I would bidet, bidet with any woman or gay man, just no straight men. Because then that would just be weird. <laughs> yeah. That'd be crossing. That'd be crossing. I would, lines. Like, I would be like, no, no bidetting with you, Dave. Oh, I'm not th- bidetting with you. It's okay. I'll bidet with your wife. Okay. I'll bidet with all day long. Yeah. Bidet. Tammy would never. She would. Oh my god. <laughs> well, if she was high on psychedelics, she might think. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Do you think I start a band called Psychedelic Bidet? <laughs> oh, that would be a good one. That'd be a good one. It's a good name. That yeah, is. <laughs> I was in a band in high school called Milk Enema. Uh, it was a Riot Girl band. I love Milk that. Enema. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! I can't believe I haven't admit that on this podcast oh, now. No. Like my my. I'm just bringing all kinds of stuff out you, of you. Yeah. Do you have the demo tape from that band? Still? Yes, I do. Oh my god! Can you please bring it so we can yes. play it on the show? Yes, I, I want to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Were you singing? What were yes, you doing? I was bassist and lead singer. Ooh, nice. My guitarist is actually getting married in a couple of weeks, and we Ooh. had. Six drummers in less than a year. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> the drummers never really worked out. The last one was the best, which we like recorded a four song demo with. And but of oh my course, God. you have to, you need to like, do you, <laughs> at least, do you have these MP3s? Yes, I do. You do? On an put them I, on iTunes. Yeah. Send them to yeah. me so I can play them right now. Well, you heard it here first. We're going to be playing um, Milkshake <laughs> Enema. Oh, no, no Milkshake Enema. <laughs> oh, that sounds awful. I mean, a Milk Enema sounds bad enough, but a Milkshake Enema. I mean, Milk Enema. It's like all cold and Well, the funny thing is when we frothy. named the band, yeah, you see. The, when we named the band, I wanted Super something thick. like really wholesome and something <laughs> gross. And I was like, and it felt very like riot girl feminine to call it milk enema because milk is something that's very feminine yeah and then enema is something just some like you know woo. there might i think where i got that from is there might be a band called enema milkshake oh really yeah there might have been a band called enema milkshake oh my god i'm gonna have to google that i think that that's why i'm thinking of that but milk- they totally uh, stole right. from milk, us the- milk enema but yeah <laughs> when i found and then years later i found out there was such a thing as a milk enema and there's like pornos oh, where oh, they like course, squirt yeah. milk oh. up their ass and then they squirt it out and like the camera sh- i've seen that i'm yeah. like i'm good i don't need to see that again. yeah <laughs> like that <laughs> like, kind of stuff they like, kind of like no but i'm just saying no, like oh, i thought oh, i was oh, being original like a milk enema nobody's ever done that there's no such thing as originality yeah. oh, there's out pretty there. much anything you can imagine has yeah. probably been done like have you guys talked about two girls one cup on this no surprisingly no, no, oh that's so shocking. funny well it's i have so a, vile well i have a funny story about that well, i was with uh Didi delgado and i adore her i just absolutely adore her but for like we were about to leave her place 
And I guess Two Girls, One Cup came up and I said I had never seen it. And she goes, oh, Matt, you have to see it. It's so ridiculous. It's so over the top. Oh. And the, the poop. I've actually, I've well, never seen it. It wasn't the poop that bothered me so much. It was like a, the, the thing that people don't tell you is they vomit on each other. And that was the part that I was kind of like, I mean, well, I'm not into poop at all, but like I, it, it, it was vile. Disgusting. But the poop was kind of fake looking. Like oh, I, I heard that it is. Yeah. On, on it. Like I think that maybe they had like put other things up yeah. their butt oh. and that was it. Did they but, like, um, still rosewooded yeah. yeah yeah but it was um but it was hilarious because the entire time i'm watching it like deity is giggling <laughs> like 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 a little girl like and so that's what like it helped me get through it because i could not take it seriously because she was just laughing so I hard i actually have never seen it which is the funny. first time i saw it all i could think it was no god <laughs> no god please no no <laughs> no no! <laughs> That's literally what I thought. I was like, yeah, it's pretty what? bad. Um, I think also there's that video of the little kid talking about like what he would do to a woman. He's like, I poo in you and then you poo oh, in me. Oh, that was the Miranda July movie? Was that it? <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. Good, we forgot to mention that in our um, movie episode. I know. We, we have to do a part two of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway. I know. We totally that, left out all of Jackass. Yeah. Like, we could to- totally do an episode just on Jackass. That's where I got the, p- the Pucano. That, yeah. That's a thing. Like, uh, on Jackass, the Pucano. The Pucano. The Pucano so Pucano's gross. Jackass. <laughs> yeah. I've seen a couple jackasses. It's oh, funny because I'm always I left whenever it. I watch it. I'm like, this is some homoerotic shit. Oh, totally. Oh, totally. Like, I kind of feel like you guys should just be having sex instead of like punching each other in the balls. Like mm-hmm. that would be a lot more interesting to me. And I mean, Johnny Knoxville's hot. He's so, very hot. I mean, I'd be like, I'm, I'm, like I'd, <laughs> I'd watch you. I'd watch you do that. No, but maybe we, that's what's so great about it. That sexual tension. Yeah. You know, they don't actually do it. They just do everything else yeah my friends um total side note but it reminds me of this my friends a friend of mine was making this like we used to make these like, crazy videos when i lived in bushwick um and it wasn't like jackass but it's like this kind of random like there's this thing called the big battle it's a sort of fake like um kung fu like mystical like just bullshit story he put together and he was trying to pitch it as a, like, a bunch of friends were editors so they were trying to pitch it as an actual show and a bunch of people worked at MTV over the years. They're like, you know, we can probably get a meeting with this. And they, they did. And they were like, they were presenting this whole, pitching this whole like demo we put together. And the, um, I forgot who they were talking to, but one of the people like the programming was like, you know, it's, it's, it's cute. It's funny, whatever. And they're like, but I think it's gonna be a pass. Basically, it's, we're, we're not gonna, it's a pass for us. And my friend's like, well, why? Like, you know, Jackass is like totally, this is kind of, it's not Jackass, but it's kind of in, the, in that realm, in that universe. And she goes, do you want the real truth? He's like, yeah. It's like, yeah, those jackass guys are hot. You guys aren't. Uh, I mean, I wasn't, sorry, I wasn't, I mean, I was not in that meeting, but still I was like, yes, that, that, that sounds accurate. No one's gonna tune in to see any of you motherfuckers. Yeah. It's like you guys. Or can, me. So it's like. <laughs> well, I mean, it's that weird, like good looking person bubble yeah. privilege. It's like, yeah. okay, well, if a good looking person farts or poops, then it's oh, like no, it's funny fucked up. or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah. It's fucked up she said that, but it's also hilarious she said that. <laughs> yeah. That's honest. Though, yeah. She's like, you guys are you're like, no one's gonna watch this. <laughs> I would have watched it. But. And this is like pre, like when the internet was like what yeah. it is now. It was yeah. not like YouTube was like, like nothing yeah so uh, that's anyway. like i was tried watching that show carnival row that's on amazon and i, don't know. I was like i can't get it's all about like fairies and stuff it's uh, orlando bloom's new show yeah. and Does i was shit like his pants in or something i wish <laughs> but i was like why is this show like getting such good reviews it's kind of boring and then i realized i was like oh the two main characters are extremely good looking and that's oh it. gotcha gotcha okay yeah i was just like Ugh, that's boring. interesting for five minutes yeah and yeah. then i'm like what else can you do 13 more episodes of that <laughs> but there's like it, it's about fairies like there's something like really cool there but i'm like so there's some topless people it's like harry potter with nudity it's like but i don't but there's no good in anything else yeah. involved it's supposed so boring that sounds boring harry yeah. potter is boring as shit to me yeah so i'm just i got like, bored with it i I, th- I just think i outgrew i it. watched I two movies and i fell it. asleep during one of them and I never read the books. I'm like, I'm not going well, to. Well, I like Harry Potter and this shit is boring. This new mm. show. Mm. Cause it's just good looking people doing boring shit. 
Oh, that's disappointing because I did want to check that out. I might still watch it. Just watch to check it, it and out, maybe yeah, no, watch it and then tell me what I'm missing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I might be like, I, I'm a pretty tough sell these days, so <laughs> I might be right there with you. Yeah, that's, like, okay. that's low priority for me. Yeah, yeah. fairies no, no, no. is about fairies and and what? It's just about fairies and like real people and fairies and like how they're comm- yeah, but the fairies are kind of like it's like takes place like. It's like Victorian. In Victorian time. Oh my god, that but sounds then, like a nightmare. But then the fairies are like just look like humans, but they have wings. Ugh. But they're treated like lesser people, so they're treated like sub. It, I don't know. It's just so it's kind of like a social commentary. Yeah. on the times we're in now. Yeah, but at the same time, You're I'm like I've watched all these. Yeah, I've watched all these social commentary movies that are a little more or TV shows that are yeah. a little more interesting. Yeah. I'm like who Ugh, cares? I'm definitely not watching that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not worth it. Um, but let's get off of that and get on to poo. <laughs> um, w- uh, when it comes to toilet paper, over versus under, what brand do you like? Um, honestly, I don't really have a brand I like. Um, do you like soft? Do you like hard? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like both. Um, <laughs> I would say what I look for in a toilet paper, especially like, and again, we, I guess we have to talk about like, is this a, with my bidet, like, or without a bidet? Just so, any, I mean, you know, whatever. So you with the bidet, I would say something that's just going to absorb the water. Cause at that point, you know, with the bidet, you just, are just like, you know, you're just drying yourself yeah. off, which is nice. But if I don't have a bidet, there is nothing worse than that toilet paper that they always have in schools and hospitals. Yeah. That's like <laughs> tissue thin and, like you have to use like half the roll and like flush the toilet like yeah. seven times. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess what I would go for is something that was absorbent and soft. Ah, an over versus under. Like, what do you mean? When you hang it on the roll. Oh, like over um, or under. You know what? I think I prefer under because oh. yes. it's not as like, especially if you have a cat, which I don't have, like it's not so much of a like t- tantalizing little string for them to come and like play with. Nice. But um, I don't know. To me, I just sort of feel like it, it makes more sense that way but i could see why the other way works too i mean yeah. i'm a gemini i'm versatile so i <laughs> like i like both i like both <laughs> you're like over and under i'm um, under so thank you you're an under too that. there's yeah. like now it's like three of three people in this entire Out well, 35 podcast. episodes <laughs> cubby, liked it. cubby just bought a whole bunch of toilet paper that doesn't have like the pa- the roll in it like oh, it's like yeah, rollless yeah. oh i which I mean, and it, it like it, it's really difficult to put it on the mm-hmm. spindle the same way, and it's also really super thick, so it's too big to put on the roll. Um, I just got, I just finished up a batch of that, and Tiny I hates it. I just was running late somewhere, and I'm like, I'll just grab this. I'm like, let me try this one, and she's like, Can you get the regular toilet paper? Because I can't stand this one. And she's the same thing. She did not. She couldn't figure out how to get. Yeah, and the spindles. Yeah. So I have to go in there and do it myself. Which and is it's whatever. paper. I mean, it's like I understand. Like if it was a plastic straw or something. But I'm like, at the end of the day, I was like, you know, trees are sustainable. People, yeah. like, I mean, the paper industry. Well, we is, did learn that most toilet paper is not made from like old growth or like you know, like it's something called slash. So it's like just like almost like scrap like, wood or something like that. Yeah, it's like, it's not the like particles that makes sense. That are pulp and over. Yeah, yeah, it's just like kind of like byproduct they make it out of. So yeah. it's not like they're cutting down. I mean, they're still using, you know, tree products or right. products from trees. But well, it's not but like the thing is, is that the tree industry, they... <sighs> replant like the paper yeah. industry they replant so i mean they have a sustain because you know you can't just log a forest and then just yeah, like, be like you know, oh, no more oh, paper. sorry no more paper <laughs> so uh there was a paper company that lived in the neighborhood i grew up in and so that's like i went and i did a report on on environmentalism and the paper industry so that's what's like i don't ever think twice about paper like i'm just like it's like it biodegrades and yeah. you know the, the trees have good lives i do them. like the bamboo toilet the paper, bamboo though. is fantastic has Ooh, to well, what's what's appealing about that? It's very thick, which is great when you're using a bidet. Uh-huh. But it's like not hard. Yeah, mm. it's like it's, it's like got all the strength of like a nice hard like three ply. But yeah. it's not like that weird. Um, but it doesn't feel like cardboard. Yeah, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like um, weird tissues either. Where it's like leaves like you know like wads. remnants. Right. Yeah. And it's not bleached either. Yeah, it's brown. It's like a light. It's oh, almost the exactly color of that tissue box, like a, yeah, like a beige yeah. brown. Um, 
But the one thing that I've been thinking about with the, the bamboo toilet paper and talking about a roll, like the cardboard roll, mm -hmm. the bamboo has a really hard, stiff roll that you can't even really squish into half. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I need to make some kind of craft out yeah. of this. See, that's what I was going to say. Like, what am I going to paper? What am I going to craft with? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I, and I tried like Googling DIY crafts with paper and it all was like stupid children stuff. Uh -huh. And then, so I'm like, should I have a bag of toilet paper rolls if case I maybe craft with uh, it in the future. I have future. a box in my house yeah. that's paper towel rolls. I want to make candles. Like can't oh. they make really good molds for candles? Oh, so that's like, a good and, idea. Yeah, and then you can just like you know. So I've been wanting to do that. Oh. So I just haven't gotten around. You can make to a bowl. It. <laughs> we can have a craft night, Matt. Yeah. You and me. I'll I've bring over my it. toilet paper ones that are the shorty version. We could do a shoot in the shit. A uh, crap, crap. We do a crap night. A uh, crap night. Uh, farts and craps. Farts and crapping. Farts and crapping. Farts and crapping. Oh, oh my god. Farts and craps. Um, and so we do know that you're more of a pants shit your pants than shit on the floor kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> Shit on the well, his was definitely so there's, a, there's a difference between well yeah it means like if you really gotta go really bad are you gonna just drop trow and shit on the floor somewhere or are you gonna go in your pants and you've well, told us two stories that were like I know you're in your apartment so right. you didn't want to like drop trow right right there on your floor but uh, like I, I it's our it's had a our moment last night where i considered pulling over and just like yeah. shitting on the street no, but, no it's our philosophical um, deep question that we ask everybody because i want to be a floor person but i have shit my pants like there are circumstances if you're on the new york city subway you're not going to drop trow and shit right there <laughs> you will Keith. be yeah <laughs> you will become a viral or sensation <laughs> or <laughs> you saw that act with davina right like oh, i was uh, there oh <laughs> Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, that was brilliant. I recorded that was so brilliant. I, 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 oh, I that need to was see the most, this. Oh my god, it's the most brilliant burlesque act I think I've seen um, in the last three Ginger, years. Ginger twisted the best burlesque act of 2019. It was a subway act, and um, yeah, Davina did a um, a she, cameo. She was a homeless yeah. person on the subway. Fem was the Showtime. <laughs> yeah, it had, it, it had all Clara the marks. If you live in New York City and you spend any amount of time on a subway. You know, yeah. you saw this act; it just resonates so hard with you. Yeah, oh my God. It is we, we I'll show you the video. I'll you and video. I, we, me and Dave, keep talking that we're gonna do like a shooting this shit burlesque like party show with the either the sh the shittiest acts <laughs> so either the act is, has to be about poo or it's just a really just bad, bad act yeah. but we're gonna like book people and nobody's gonna know the difference until you get there like it's gonna be great. this person just has well, a really bad act. i'll do it but okay. i want that subway act oh it's it. I, I can't wait to see it again it's it's super genius yeah, it is, yeah. It is, it's brilliant it's i was like I, I talked to her afterwards. I'm like, this is the this needs to be out there for people to see. It needs like, to be just, a beehive. Like yeah. they need because it's like it's such a story. Wait, how many in, people were in it? Five. Yeah, it was Ginger Twist, Davina, um, Tiny, and Clara, Fam, and Clara. Oh my god, yeah. amazing! Yeah. It was it was brilliant. it was seriously the best act I've seen. It was at Coney. I mean, yeah, was it? Was, it, it was for Beelze and, Babes in um, drag. Yeah, was she, she was yeah. Tony D. Yeah, Tony D. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, Tony people Dan out Trump. there, I uh, believe if you follow, if you if you go to the Ginger Twist um, on Instagram, you can see a clip of part it. part of it, yeah. and it's 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 fantastic. So I don't know if I followed Ginger. That's so weird. I mean, I know we're kind of sidetracking a little bit here, but on, the, on that on that <laughs> sorry, on, I no, that's that. on that note of shitty performances or performances about like that involve poop or something like that. Um, I mean, it's poop of Jason, but Autumn, oh. who, who we've had on the show, just did my wife's show um, this past Friday, and she did a, her Dolly Farton act. <laughs> And it was I helped her do the music for it, so I was pretty excited. Oh my god! I recorded hilarious. it too for Ellen. Is so. it to Dolly Parton and then there's to nine to five? Happen. There's farting in it, yes. Oh ah. uh, my god! And she's dressed as a giant whoopee cushion, and she's uh. got she eats a big thing of beans at the beginning of it. It's <laughs> it's so funny, and I love her so much. It's, yeah, it's great. I love her. That's, really good. that's gonna be in our party. Oh hell yeah! Yeah. And then a Gal Fridays, the the constipation song. Yeah, by um, Screaming Jay Hawkins. Oh my God, I can't wait. Constipation Blues. We need to start planning this party. Yeah, we should. It's we, Sign we, we me have up. enough. We Maybe have enough. for our fifty second episode, the one full year. I mean, we could we could just do it like on the year, like the anniversary. Yeah. So fuck it. It'd be fun. Yeah. But um, yeah. So anyway, sorry, taking away from that a little bit from the, some of our. No, questions. that's okay. So, have you ever pooped on the floor? 
by choice um like have you been out and about and you're like i'm gonna shit my pants but i don't want to no I'm pull down no yeah. that's never happened yeah but i've accidentally shat on the floor in my bathroom when, <laughs> <laughs> what well i mean i i enjoy my toys okay and sometimes when you're playing with your toys like shit happens and so i would say that you know yes like that that has happened a few times in my experience but you know that's the thing is i don't yeah i don't have an audience you yeah. know what i mean it's like you know yeah, you're making yeah. love to yourself and you know it's different when it's someone else why aren't is you there? working out the box is the question <laughs> you know i yeah. have an act that i um i said it's my fisto number from he-man fisto fisto from he-man <laughs> And um, and as I take the costume off, I'm in like a fisting singlet, and then I pull out a dildo and I sit on it and on stage. God so. bless you, Matt and I. Oh so God, yeah, it, the funniest name, Fisto. Yeah, Fisto. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was it was funny because it was um, oh God, what is her name? It's like I've been trying to tell. Uh, I did it at Bizarre Bushwick, and someone came up to me after the show and was like, "Well, now you have an act for the box," and I was clearly. like, "Clearly." I say, you okay, should contact them. I should. You I know really people should. who work there. I do. Yeah. Yeah. You should be like. I'm and if for anybody who's listening who doesn't know what the box is, it's a um, variety burlesque cabaret. place, cabaret place in New York City that does late, late night shows with a lot of insertion. Yeah, lots and. Lots. And now all of a sudden the police are raiding the box. Really? <laughs> oh, no, just, yeah. oh. no, the fact I that think, I well, they probably have a cabaret license. Yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. Like yeah. That, so I'm sure that I'm sure legally they've got all that stuff but it's one of those things where you you it's bottle service it's thousands of dollars to go unless you know somebody um but those people are getting their money's worth yeah except for the performers do not get paid nearly enough money because i i feel like if you're doing insertion you should be getting a lot more oh yeah like especially with the money that they're yeah that's why I don't do the act very often. It's yeah. because I'm just like, I mean, I have the, the G rated version and the X rated version. And it's sort of like, uh, if you want me to like sit on a dildo on stage, I, like, need, double. <laughs> I need, I you know, I need some money because I mean, there's a lot of prep that goes into it. You oh, have to 100%. be careful about what you eat and you, know, you have to clean out before and a little bit before. But if it's at the box, maybe you don't have to clean out oh, before. Uh, <laughs> no. I, that's again, not the show I'm going to put on. Not the show I'm going to put on. I always, say there's a difference between everyone has to deal with shit like everyone in life has to deal with shit on a daily basis but there's a difference between dealing with it and playing with it yes. and it's like I'm not gonna play with it no. so but it was really funny because like I did the act with Clara Coquette once and uh, we were doing it at a private party that Heather whatever was throwing and so it was like synchronized swimmers and so and they were having their Halloween party so everyone was in costume and so I you know I, I went in the bathroom and I double checked everything and then and, um, and I was telling Clara because you know Clara is a big you know pervert and Clara was just like I was like oh you know I just like I just want it to be clean when it's done because I don't want to like you know that the audience didn't pay for that so it was really funny because like I got I did it and like you know the whole obviously the whole party was jaws were on the ground because it's a pretty big dildo <gasps> and um and I stood up and I, I got, and then all of a sudden I got really paranoid. I was like, oh, like I don't want to pull it out for everybody. But then, so like I ran behind like a plant or something and I pulled it out. And then I went back and I was like, it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Not that I was that worried about it, but, but you still, you know, yeah, you know, like, yeah. yeah, you wanna, you know. I mean, it's different, like, if you're alone with somebody and it happens, you know. I mean, it's like, it's still a little embarrassing, but, you know, usually most gay men are pretty, like, aware, you know, it's your butthole, so, of course, but. So that's the term I was rem- trying to remember a couple podcasts ago. You trek through mud. If you can trek through mud, you can fuck through blood. <laughs> <laughs> but this is even like, if you can trek through mud, you can fuck through blood mud yeah <laughs> or mud yeah you're like just mud it's just yeah. lots it's of just mud I mean, mud on the helmet it's like the way i i always phrase it to people when i've been on the receiving end of it i guess is that i say i'm like i'm like you know what i celebrate my anus is primary function because I mean, I love my anus for its primary function, but then, you know, if that, so I'm aware that with its secondary function, there might be a 
primary function. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, you know, it's, it's just being an adult, you know, yeah. I mean, about you it. You can't and poke just, the bear in the cave and not yeah. expect it to wake up. I mean, I'd imagine it's, it's sort of, I was having sex with a trans man once and um, there was menstrual blood. And I mean, I kind of freaked out a little bit because, you know, when I'm having sex with men, like, you know, it's, it's when you, see, you see blood, blood yeah. it's bad. Yeah. And then I had this moment where I was like, oh, are you okay? And then I was like, is this what I think it is? And they were like, yeah. And I'm like, are you okay? And they were like, yep. I'm like, all right, well, I'm all right. <laughs> so it's like, let's just be adults about it. It's like, whatever. Yeah. You know? Uh, do you have any first memories of poop or farts as a child? Was your family like open to talk about this stuff? Oh, well, yeah, it's funny you bring that up. Well, my dad uh, is a gastroenterologist. Oh. So um, my my sisters and I used to talk about poop at the table and my mom would get just so mad because my dad didn't care. I mean, my dad was just like, you know, he's like, just, yeah. uh, he's like I've seen that. Yeah, before. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> and I just remember my mom like it was like almost every day, like a poop would come up at some point. And I'm like, you know, uh, in retrospect, I understand my mom's frustration. But then like, you know, but looking back, I'm like, OK, mom, you're like sitting at a table with a bunch of like, you know, I don't think a single one of us was like a double digit age at that point. Yeah, so you know, gonna happen, kids bro? and a stomach doctor. Like, what do you think we're going to talk about? Like, you know, so um, that's really like, so yeah, I have that memory of just sort of like, you know, my mom getting frustrated, <laughs> getting very mad at us all. But my dad just kind of be like, ah, eh, whatever. Do you remember like, like as I when I was a kid when I'd poop I would say goodbye to the poopies and I'd flush because I thought they lived in the toilet tank I thought they were like little animals oh my god that's so funny that's so cute um no (laughs) I I don't think I have like why did I start this podcast with this crazy person I don't think I have anything like that but I think um what I would admit is that I think I was very aware of my anus from a like young age like I was just like oh what is this thing like there's something going on here that's intriguing to me and then when I like when I actually I do very clearly remember the moment I put gay sex together in my head and I was like oh well I have a hole that things could go in and that's kind of fun you're like Eureka (laughs) yeah so um, I do remember that but I don't really have any specific like you know um, I guess there was the one time I ate beets and my sisters were worried about me (laughs) and they told my dad they were like "Uh, Matt's poop was really really red and he was like it's because we had beets (laughs) yeah beets always get you yeah Yeah. what the fuck Oh, um, I have to pee really quick. Okay. Um, I have like w- one more question to ask, but then I want to see if you want to tell the story you told at camp. <laughs> okay, what's the other question? Okay, the other one is just um, y- y- we know you have a husband. Um, how does your husband fare with potty humor and stuff? Do you guys like get along? I feel like you're a little bit more like I, I've hung out with you and Cubby a lot, mm-hmm. but I feel like you're a lot more adventurous, especially with your like being just open about your what you want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Cubby seems not a lot of not like but not more reserved. Ass. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Well, the thing with Cubby is that he is a sufferer of resting bitch face. <laughs> And so he looks, he looks angry all the time. He looks a lot more intimidating than he is. And he comes across as a lot more conservative than he is, too. So he's not necessarily going to instigate anything. But if you're one of those, like, I mean, I don't know what Cubby would I would have said to you if you had been like, let's go douche together. Or like, let's go, like, let's oh, go yeah. just like animal like ourselves or whatever. If <laughs> I, I feel like if I were to bidet with anybody, you would be into it if we were high on mushrooms. But if I asked Cubby, he'd be like, oh, n- I'll come and watch. But no. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, but you know what? Honestly, I, <laughs> honestly, I, d- I don't really know how he, I, like, you know, I wouldn't be surprised either way. Let's just, I, I think it would depend on his mood because again i mean he's a gemini so i mean it's pretty much easy to like kind of push but on. Do you, you guys sleep in the same bed you uh, fart around each other how 
are how is every well it's how's funny, potty talk around your partner um i am not a big fan of smelling people's farts to be honest with you like because no, i mean either. i think it goes <laughs> with being an air sign like i'm just like oh you're like polluting the air and i'm also an asthmatic so it's just like i'm just always very i'm a pot smoker as i'm saying this but like um i'm just very aware of what i'm breathing in so it just grosses me out like i'm like oh that's your butt bacteria and i'm breathing it it's my body now like anal vapor yeah (laughs) and it's like and especially if i don't know you or if i don't like you i'm just like yeah so so to me it's sort of like it's like i'm aware that people do it but i just i think the polite part of me is sort of like you know what like because i know mine smell really bad so like i'm gonna go in the other room and do it so we pretty much we had that conversation i was like listen i don't want to smell your farts so like you know we don't like you know we have some gay friends that like fart on each other and stuff like that and i'm just like yeah I'm not- i was like uh, <laughs> it's fine and i mean there's times when you're in bed and stuff like that and people are sleeping and whatever i mean at that point i just kind of roll my eyes and i'm just like all right you're asleep you don't know what you're doing but like um <laughs> we do um we do talk about poops together like we'll be like oh my god i just had a really nice one or i had a really angry one or <laughs> like you know so uh so yeah i mean we're open about it but again i don't think it's one of the it's not necessarily a shared experience like you know like if he's if we take a shower together or one of us has to do that, like, you know, the other one will leave the room. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, it's sort of like, for me, it's like kind of private thing. Yeah. So, um, talking about it, definitely laughing about it. Absolutely. But, but yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I get a little squeamish around it while it's happening. So I'll just, I think that's the way to phrase it. <laughs> yeah. I get it. That's great. No, and I totally think Cubby's kind of the same way. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Cool. No, I just like to know how people like my partner has that's been a good question. Yeah. yeah. My partner's been on the podcast and he's told us plenty of stories, but he thinks that I'm disturbed that I even started this podcast <laughs> and he thinks that potty humor is the worst and like, if he's in the shower and I got to poop, I'm going in the bathroom. But the, if I even tried to talk to him through the door while he's pooping, he freaks the fuck uh, out. So. Poopy! Yeah. I, okay. heard that, I heard that story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the funniest part at camp Tiny. is because I'll be screaming for Bubby all over. And it gets to the point at the end of the week, the like four days, everybody's like, Bubby! 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 Yeah. Bubby! And he's just like, oh my God. He's like, oh my God, stop. He's got like, <laughs> Groups of people. What uh, Georgia said years ago, she's like, I always know where Ellen and Gerald are at camp because you just hear Bubby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Totally, I love it. What are you gonna say about Tiny? No, she always brings that up. She's like, I think the fact that like she's like pitching Gerald at the um, at the beach. Like and you're like outside the men's room going like you okay in there? Yeah, <laughs> so that was okay the story. Yeah, yeah. Bobby, I was fucking right? laughing so I, hard. I was so laughing so too because it's like, he was like, and I, I could just hear your voice being like, <laughs> I, I was yeah. there. I was. Surprised you didn't walk in there and be like, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna find out if he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like an old I've grandma. Seen it, I've seen it all before. Yeah. It's fine. Just but <laughs> I do that too. Like if if Cubby like goes off into the bathroom, he's in there for a while. I'll be like, Are you okay? Like, is everything all right? Like, and it's usually. That just that like he's on his phone and just like lost track of time or whatever <laughs> and I'm like our oven the stove top wasn't working very well this morning and I eat turkey bacon and he eats pork bacon and so he puts his bacon on one pan and he's like you don't want me to cook this with yours I was like fuck that don't touch your pork to my turkey and so I put mine on another <laughs> pan and I turned on the um, tried to turn on the stove top and it wouldn't st- turn on like those burners are fucked for some reason it's not that old of a stove so Gerald all of a sudden was like oh fuck I got a shit and his like his burner's going but the bacon is like still raw and I was like fuck this I'm switching and he goes what are you doing and I go let's be honest you're gonna be in there for a while I'm gonna get my turkey bacon cooked before you even come out my turkey bacon was done I moved his back to the one burner that's working and he still wasn't out of the toilet (laughs) I could time cooking bacon with his shit (laughs) You're like one that's flip. Love. He's halfway through now. He's that's halfway love. through that dump. Yeah, that's love. I, I um, I Tiny's always like, "What are you doing in there?" I'm like, "I'm just thinking," or I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, private time. I mean, that's kind of the thing about it is it's like you know, it it's you know, it's especially if you live with other people. I mean, family or roommates or something. It's kind of the only time you might get to yourself. Yeah. You know, like so. 
Um, yeah, so I can respect that. Like, if somebody's like, you know, they, 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 you know, when they poop, they take a half hour because they want to sit there, read the paper or whatever. And I mean, I get it. Yeah. But I'm also like, you know, because sometimes when I gotta go, I gotta go. And I'm like, tap, 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 tap. Yeah. Like, you know, it wrap it like up. She always has to go when I'm just going to the bathroom. I sit down, I gotta go. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, eat some prunes. Yeah, I'm like, you have to fucking hold it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Matt. Oh wait, let me. Have you ever farted or pooed or anything during a performance besides the dildo coming out of your tush? Um, I did accidentally fart once. I was at Bizarre Bushwick and I was talking to a performer, and we were sitting on the stools, and I went to move, and I <laughs> farted. And as I said, I mean, mine. Yeah, it was. And mine smells, so I knew it's not like it made noise, and you can just kind of like you know, because like my mom's kind of like that. It's like she makes a lot of noise, but they don't smell. And I'm like, and I was like, you could just like kind of politely blow that off. But um, I felt like I had to disclaim to everybody around me. I was like, guys, I'm so sorry. I just farted. And everyone was really cool about it. Like, I was actually kind of amazed at how cool everyone was. Well, because like, re- it's probably refreshing when someone says it because there's nothing worse than when you're talking to somebody and you're like, you just farted. And now yeah. we're just going to pretend like we don't smell that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the thing is it's like, I mean, I get it. Like no one wants to own up to it, but like, that's the thing is I made a promise to myself like a long time ago. It's like, if I fart, I'm going to own it up. Yeah. Like, I'm mean, like, guys, I'm sorry. Like, cause I, I mean, own like, to it. kind of like what I said earlier, it's like, you know, if I'm going to stink up a room, like people should just like, I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry. And again, it's kind of humbling. Totally. Um, at a show, <laughs> I'm sure I've had to poop at a show at some point, but, um, the thing, uh, and again with art modeling too, because I art model, um, I get nervous just because like, you know, you know, I carry what, what, like wipes and stuff like that just because I may mean, have a little furry butt. So, I mean, I just worry that like, I'm going to be art modeling and then like so bend over there. or something and then there's going to be like, Oh, you just, so I do think about that sometimes. I'm like, so there have been times where it's Christmas like afterwards. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I don't get that bad, but you know, it's just, but still it's like, I worry, I worry. Hence why I carry the wipes yeah. because, and I, why I love my bidet, you know? But, um, but yeah, I'm sure it's happened and, you know, I just make sure that I'm all nice and clean, but nice. you know, it's just, it's like, I'm kind of, um, I tend to do that before I leave the house. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those, like, nice. it just depends, but, um, so Matt, go into your story, my please. My story. Okay. This is one really, of my favorite stories ever. You really, you guys don't have like a time limit or no. anything, do no. you? Okay. I'll try to give you the Reader's Digest version of the story <laughs> because there's like, it's so funny because this is like an epic, epic poem or like you know it's like because there's a lot of like stories within the story and stuff like that so um so as i mentioned before i like my toys and so i was um and i tend to play a lot uh with myself like because i i stay up late and usually around like midnight to three o'clock is kind of like you know i'm either painting or i'm doing stuff and then you know it's usually like when my hormones peak and so it had to have been like two in the morning or something like that. And it was in no, it was in October. No, it was in November. And Cubby is a window dresser at Bloomingdale. So this was the busiest time of his year because they're getting ready to do the Christmas windows. So, I mean, for something like this to happen, this was like the worst possible time for my <laughs> husband. So oh, I have yeah, to, I cha- to my <laughs> like Cubby is all is and always will be my hero for this story and an, another hospital story too that's not related to this but yeah cubby takes good care of me but so i had gotten a double-ended dildo and if you don't know what that is it's essentially it's a really long like skinny dildo that has like two heads on it so like you could insert it in your butt or vagina and then ser- insert it into someone else's butt and vagina and then it's like think ass to ass scene yeah. and rec yeah, room yeah. Yep. I, i'm aware okay <laughs> so Maybe Google you, double well, the dildo people. In this story, I was amazed at how many medical professionals did not know what a me- double dildo was. So I feel like I have to clarify. Okay. So I'm playing and, you know, I'd been seeing some X2 videos and I got some bad ideas in my head. And, you know, I basically I put the one dildo in my ass, like the double ended all the way in. And then I pushed it in further with another one. What? And then, <laughs> yeah. And then, um, 
when I went to push the double ended dildo out, it got the head of it got stuck on my coccyx, my tailbone, and I couldn't get it out. And so I'm sitting there trying everything. And this and, is like 12 inches yeah, long. Yeah. And um, and it's not really particularly thick, but it was it was long. And so I... It's a lot of dildo. So I woke Cubby up and I was like, I was like, hey, we need to... We, well, there's, there's stories about that. There's stories about that. So um, wake Cubby up and I'm like, hey, can you help me out? And I mean, I think if this had happened to me now, it wouldn't have been a problem because somebody probably could have reached up in there and grabbed it. <laughs> but this is a little, I was not that advanced in my capabilities. And your amateur anal. Uh, yeah. Well, it's whole training. <laughs> whole training. Right, right, yeah. right. You're so I wasn't, I wasn't in like, you know, level one. <laughs> fist, fist territory. I was still in, you know, toy territory. So, um, <laughs> so I wake him up and, and we can't, uh, we can't get it out. So I did some Google searching and, and it's two funny things. You, I'm just picturing you walking around with this thing at, sticking out of your ass. It's not the, sticking out of my ass. It's, sorry, in, it's, sorry, it's in there. Yeah. Sorry, it's in your ass. And you're like waking up cubby. It's yeah. like, what, what, what's going on? Yeah. And then after that, you're go- you see you're Googling. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't mean to laugh. I just, no, no, no. The story is hilarious. Okay, so like, sorry. I mean, this is this is actually kind of why I choose to uh, to tell this story because, like, Holy fuck. Um, it is a learning. It is a, well, it's a cautionary tale. Yeah, and um, it's also uh, you know because I am an advocate of of anal play and anal pleasure, and uh, but you know flared bases. Yes, and um, or you some know, kind of something to yeah, help pull that thing to pull back it out. back out. Yeah. yeah. And um, also, you'll see some extreme stuff on the internet that, you know, it though it's possible, might not be something that you can do yourself. Okay. So, um, so having said that, so um, I, in my Googling, I saw that, like, most of them was like, well, you know, just, like, wait and, you know, relax because you might be tensed up and, it's, and that's what's keeping it in. So just try to relax and it'll work its way out. Well, I went to bed and... And it didn't. Oh my. So, mind you, I, I know this is a podcast, so you guys yeah. can't see Matt. He is a very slender man, very slender. <laughs> so to have this thing in, up inside him, I mean, I'm surprised you couldn't physically see it. You from couldn't the outside. physically see it, and that was the thing. I, I, it is disappointing <laughs> later when I have I, I have a detail. Like crazy this. magic trick. All right, so <laughs> um, so I went to Colin Lord, and because it's LGBTQ clinic here, because I figured that they'd be sympathetic, and they were, but unfortunately, they didn't really have anything there to, to deal with it. So uh, there was another adventure with a doctor in uh, the West Village who I went to see and had to pay a grand to just for them to turn around and tell me we can't get this out because we don't have the right tools. Now that was really angry. That was really Are you fucking kidding me. Oh no, I'm not fucking kidding you. Like that would the piss like me well the, the anesthesiologist off. that was standing there was like ready to like go to the Hamptons for the weekend, and I had but I had to pay him a grand first. Like I was just like I was kind of like you know what like again I'm a physician's son so like I get it doctors should get paid, but I just I, I just felt very uh, financially taken advantage yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. But well, I mean because the guy even told it because I was like I didn't have health insurance and we didn't have a lot of money. I mean we still don't have a lot of money, and the guy was like well. Don't worry about it. You know, you can pay your husband back, and da 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 da. And I'm just like, um, uh, you know, this is one less ivory back scratcher. No, for no, no. You I'll guys. pay a thousand dollars if you promise you can fix my problem. Right. Well, and they could, but if you can't, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I think that they should have given us our money back. But yes. Anyway, but that's like that's that's a very and it's so funny because the doctor actually wrote me an email later. I was like, I just wanted to check in and see if everything was okay because I kind of think he wanted to ask me out later. Ooh. Because I also kind of got a weird vibe that he was like sort of turned on by the fact that I was able to have this giant like, dildo in my house. Which again, I mean, I don't have a problem with, but you know, again, it's like, you think I'm cute. Well then maybe like, give me a break on, yeah. the, on the discount here. Freebie. Or yeah, you can take, you take him out. He, you, he can take you out to a thousand dollars worth of dinners. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, or, or sponsor my raw artist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so we ended up going to, uh, the hospital and, uh, we were in the ER and my nurse was this like six foot three muscle, guy with a shaved head and a British accent 
And so the whole time, like, I'm, Cubby and I are, like, giggling like schoolgirls because we're like, you know, like, ooh, the orderly's cute. Like, you know. <laughs> and so... Um, they told me they were like, okay, well, you know, we're going to we're going to try to sedate you and then try to get it out again. And so, you know, they like Cubby was in the waiting room and they uh, they were about to do it. And they were like, well, we're going to uh, give you so and so CCs of ketamine. And it was like, um, <laughs> special K? excuse me, like this is like ketamine, like special K. And they were like, we don't know what that is. So that's the other thing I was really amazed at is oh that like God. how like the this room full of doctors and nurses didn't know that special like ketamine was a like recre like wow. was like a recreational drug. So, you know, being a party monster fan and. And uh, of that era of New York, probably glad I'm not involved in it. But like, it, you know, it's an interesting New York City history. Mama. I was like curious about ketamine. And I'm like, OK, like, you know, one of the big side effects that you have to worry about is respiratory stuff. I'm an asthmatic. So I'm like, all right, I'm in a hospital. I'm in a controlled environment. Like, so bring it on. Let's do the ketamine here. Let's do it. It's like, so <laughs> they, put, they put me... <laughs> They put me under and I mean, another thing about me is I'm a shaman. So like, you know, altered states and journeying and altered states and lucid dreaming and stuff like that. I have a lot of experience with. So metaphysically speaking, this was a very intense situation for me, which is, again, a story within a story. But the Reader's Digest version of that is that I um, pretty much had convinced myself at one point that I died. That was a lot more hurt than I was. Oh my God. Um, That, I mean, it was just my, it was, it was really in, like, I can't imagine doing ketamine in a recreational setting because like the places I went, like, I mean, it was not particularly fun. Yeah. I mean, it was interesting, but it wasn't particularly fun. And I mean, I understand maybe in a party situation, it would be different, but um, so they pulled me out and they said, um, all right, so we can't, we, we can't get it out. So we're going to have to admit you and then do a more like oh in-depth my surgery. God. So I'm like, so I mean, here I am. And I mean, I'm just like, I'm already humiliated. And as I said, we uh-huh. didn't have health insurance or, or, um, or uh, money. And I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, all right. And God love my husband. You know, I mean, he should be at work, you know, I mean, trying to get these windows up and here he is holding my hand. And, you know, I mean, I just, you know, I may have self-esteem depression issues. (laughs) So I'm like, oh my God, I'm such a piece of shit. And I mean, all because I stuck a dildo in my ass. So um, they admitted me and uh, I saw the x-ray and, you know, we've seen x-rays of people with like weird things in their butts, like light bulbs and stuff like that. And that's one of the other reasons why I tell this story is because it was a dildo. I mean, it's something that goes in your butt. It wasn't yeah. like I had gerbils or something yeah, like just, that. Like, you know, this is like nine normal. volt batteries. Yeah. Or like, you know, a thing of Vaseline or yeah. something like, you know, I mean, I've, I've heard a lot of stories about what people have put up their butts. So, um, so I, uh, Sorry, where was I in the story? So you uh, came, were, so came admit, out of the ketamine. Oh, so the, so the X-ray. You. The X-ray was X-ray. really disappointing because, like, you know, the X-rays went through the dildo, so you oh. really couldn't. So they had to just do arrows because, trust me, if it had been an amazing. <laughs> Photo. I mean, I'd be. I'd have T-shirts printed. <laughs> right. I mean, there are all kinds of things I would have done with that. And so I was a little disappointed. I didn't get like a great X-ray shot with that. So, um, so they admitted me, and the doctor. One of the doctors came in and kind of started to sex change me a little bit. Like he was kind of like, you know, it was like, oh my god, this thing is huge. And I was like, I was sitting there thinking, I was like, honey, you don't know what huge is. <laughs> I was like, that is not a huge toy. That is like a small toy. <laughs> like, I, I like. And I just looked at him and I was like, excuse me, sir, but like, I know where this is going. I've already figured this out. I'm not a stupid person. So I was like, I don't need you to come in here when I'm already in this like vulnerable place and tell me that I shouldn't have done this. Like I get it. And he backed off immediately, but, um, and in his defense, I mean, I think that they do have to do that because, you know, some people don't know better. So, um, or don't figure that thing, those things out. So they, um, so the next day they, uh, they, we, we had to do a surgery and they told me they were going to go in, um, you know, through my butt. Uh, and if they couldn't get it out there, that they were going to have to cut me open. And oh so, and God. then I was going to have oh. to have a colostomy bag what? for a couple months and I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, because I'm a burlesque performer and I'm an art model. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to have this colostomy bag so I can't like perform. And then I'm going to have this scar that, of course, everybody for the rest of my life is going to be like, what's that? And I'm going to have to be like, oh, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
So, so you um, got shot. <laughs> I got <yeah>. shot. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I go, uh, you know, they're prepping me for surgery and they have me there and the doctor, you know, they read the, you know, are you, you know, legal name, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the doctor looked at me and he goes, he goes, my legal name, last name. He's like, that sounds like, you know, there's a really, uh, well like known well-known doctor. gastroenterologist with that last name and i'm like yeah it's my dad <laughs> <laughs> oh this gets better and better so oh i mean i'm about God. to go under and but it he's did, like fanning out of your well, dad <laughs> it did actually make me feel better because it's like I, my dad is not the best person in the world but my dad is an amazing physician and so it did it did sort of you know, that's the sacrifice I think you make as a kid of a doctor sometimes is that they're not really around. And so sometimes you have to take a step back and be like, you know what, this is for the world. Like my dad is is yeah. ser- is, is serving the world. So, I mean, it's like, you know, you have to kind of be a little unselfish about it. So it did sort of comfort me because I was like, okay, this person like knows my dad and uh, respects my dad and is probably a good doctor. So I felt like I was a little bit in better hands, right. but it was still just like another one. It was like, how much more humiliating can this get? So, <laughs> so you got your dad um, on Skype over here in the, in the, in the <laughs> surgery theater. <laughs> So, um, so the surgery happens, I, I wake up and I could still feel all the tubes and stuff in my, in my throat. Ooh. And I, and it was so funny cause I kind of started panicking because I couldn't breathe. And the nurse came over, she's like, nope, 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 nope. And she started pulling them out. And then the first thing, um, I asked her, I was like, did you have to cut me open? And she said, no. And I burst into tears and I was like, good. Thank you. I'm so glad. I'm so grateful. Were you able to get it out? Yes. And then, so about five minutes later, this little Asian nurse comes over and I think English was not her first language. Um, and she comes up and she goes, so at this point they were calling the dildo the foreign object. <laughs> so she was like, she was like, so what do you want us to do with the foreign object? And I'm like, um, could you wash it off and give it back to Are me? you serious? <laughs> Yes. Dildos are expensive. Oh they are expensive. But it's funny because like I, I actually just recently threw it away because it's I, I've kind of outgrown it, to be you honest with you. Fra- you should have framed yeah. it. Well, you know, part of me sort of like because I used it right away when I got out of the hospital because I was what? like, I don't want to like I yeah. don't want to like, you know, be afraid of it. But I also um I just sort of felt like I had to let it go. But um I don't know. I mean, it was just like, it's a weird, you know, hospital bills are paid. Um, it was a humbling experience to have. Um, I think it's a sex positive story. Um, and I think I was very lucky. And You're very I, lucky. And I think that it is a testament to my husband, as I said. I was like, my husband I mean, was very much, amazing. Um, you. you know, put me first, which I appreciated. And, um, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky. And I mean, so is he, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am very, very lucky. So, I mean, it's just this fun, silly little story. So, Right after the (laughs) the hospital's over. So I got in a cab, went home, finished my costumes for Homo erectus, and then went and did my show. (gasps) And so, yeah. So Tigger was the host. So I'm like, all right, if anyone is going to understand and sympathize with this, it's going to be Tigger. So I pulled Tigger backstage in in Stonewall, and I looked at him, and I was like, so Tigger, this thing. So there's, I'm telling people I went to the hospital the the um, PR answer is it was for my asthma, but the real reason is this. And I told Tigger the story, and he looked at me, and he goes, you know what, Matt Knife? We all hear these stories about these things happening to people, but we don't ever know like the people it happens to. <laughs> it's just like, I've never known someone that's happened to. And now I do. And I was like, okay, Tigger, that's a badge of honor that I can be that person for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was all worth it. So that's, oh. that's my, that's my dildo stuck in my butt story. Oh my God. <laughs> that was epic. Isn't it? It's I mean, a it fantastic re- story. The fact that you went to like multiple places, you had to go. I mean, that's just, 
Well, I mean, uh, trying to talk to somebody on the phone about it. Well, it was. The, I left out this part of the story too. When we got to the hospital, it was so funny. We were waiting in line, the admission line, and there were two windows, and there was an obvious gay guy, and then there was somebody else, and the two of us were just praying. We were like, "Please have it be the gay guy. Please have it be the gay guy." And it was so again, like the universe was looking out for me in this. But story, also, like so. you were honest to them about what happened. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's so many people out there oh, like yeah. something's wrong with me, and I don't know. And and then they x-ray and they're like, why did you put a, a whole like, um, like five dollars bill? Yeah. Five dollars yeah. worth of quarters. Up again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, what? And they're like, how did you find that? And they're like, they act dumb about it. Wait, wait, it's what? like, what? Well, I, a lot of the doctors. Expect? How are there nine pickles yeah. in my ass? Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, a lot of the doctors did commend me for that. And I mean, again, it comes into being a medical, you know, coming from a medical family. It's like, you know, my dad was always really upfront about that with us was like, you know, guys, like you never lie to a doctor because they're like, you're just making their job eat harder. Yeah. It's going to cost you more money. You're just better to be honest and yeah. upfront. And they know what and, to work with. And then they know what to do and then they can help you because most things it's better when they know right away. Mm-hmm. So that's that. So, yes, I mean, I think it was a lot of just, you know, putting on your adult panties and and owning up to what happened yeah you know do you imagine you walked in there and like they're looking at the x-ray and someone just goes like you know what is that (laughs) what the fuck is that (laughs) it's a double-ended dildo i mean i just oh that's even the funnier thing like i had i know this is not poop related but when i had my hyperparathyroid removed they put me on vicodin for the pain and it was so painful for the first four days and the Vicodin just made my life worse so I was like fuck it I'm gonna eat edible pot because like that hopefully can help my my pain and it was so much better yeah and then a week later when I went to get the stitches taken out the doctor was I was telling him what was happening with me and I was like yeah I actually been eating a lot of marijuana because it's it's been really helpful for me to like get back like with the pain and he just looked at me and he goes do you think you have a problem and I go with what with edibles and he's like yeah and i was and i and i looked at their his nurse and the nurse looked at me like just ignore him and i was like i was like cancer patients eat pot you're like you have a problem that might be the like you know the like uh, there might be like legal reason why he has to say that too because like if he were to turn around and be like oh yeah just keep doing that you know it's not legal in the country and then you know he you could maybe sue him for malpractice so that might be the like no but i I have to say that to you like because it's a legal answer yeah but i was like Like, i'm not admitting to you that i am doing heroin for the brain right right. oh by the way i have a raging meth habit yeah (laughs) i mean i think most doctors understand that marijuana is like the least of your worries. I honestly like, think I that mean, he was like clueless. Yeah. Because even the nurse was like, well, your doctor didn't know special K was for yeah, yeah. operation. Yeah. Was like, what that, is that? What the nurses. The nurses is. Like it was like five people didn't know, didn't know like, that. What? And yeah. It was very so weird. Funny. Maybe they were just all on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What? what, what? I don't, I don't they're know. They're like, we have to pretend like we don't know what that is. Like, like, I, I, don't, we're I don't know what that is. Oh my God. I don't know what that is. The foreign object. That was great. That was fantastic. Well, I mean, thank you I'm for sorry you had me to go, share that. I'm like, sorry you had to go through that. Yeah, that yeah. It really sucks. I mean, but God bless there was a silver line. The story, yeah, the end. story was fantastic. Well, that was kind of like what got me through it too while it was happening is because I was like, all right, however this ends, this is oh, going to yeah. be a pretty epic story. Because yeah. I, mean, I, like, I don't was. really have a whole lot of shame you know, when it comes to my life. And I'm pretty open book about most things. And I mean, again, I just think it's one of those, it's like, let's destigmatize anal pleasure and, um, you know, I mean, it's a sex accident at the end of the day, which I mean, if you're going to hurt yourself, I mean, during yeah. sex, that's kind of the best, <laughs> the yeah. best story. So best scenario, and, right? And I mean, as I said, there were no, there was no real like long term effects. And, you know, I mean, my pride, you know, I mean, is a little bruised, but you know, it's kind of fun to get on these podcasts and, and talk about it and well, just be like, ah, oh, let's all point and laugh at me for a second. No, I'm, I'm not. No, cool. no, I'm not laughing oh, You're laughing at you. with me. No, yeah, 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 but yeah, no, like, no, I'm our... our I'm proud of you for telling it on the podcast because yes, it's a poop podcast, but it's important to know your anal health, right? On so many levels, yeah, absolutely. From this stuff happens to, I'm sure, to, to a lot of people that yeah. you know they don't yeah. talk about it. So yeah, it's, and this is one of those kind of stories that is beyond incredible and like shocking and i remember the first time you told it at camp like four years ago, and I was just like, but but but, um, but. But it's also like one of those kind of stories that so many people will learn from it. Like, be careful 
when you stick something up your ass that you can you have an able to pull it back you have out. bones in there yeah, yeah that that will get in the way and, and sphincters you know. that close up and yeah. yeah well i knew um i know another trauma surgeon and i told her this story and she's like a pansexual lesbian so uh so she was she was t- like she was like oh she's like i've cut dildos out of people like, <gasps> oh she's, my like, God. she's like she's like i've done that a couple of times so she told me my story was actually pretty tame in her experience as a and doctor. you came out with Without being cut. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, she like, well, no, she didn't cut them. Like oh. she said that like w- with the one guy, it was like a huge dildo. Oh, like Lordy. it was a huge, huge, huge dildo. And um, cause you know, when your butt is an extremely elastic uh, part of your body and it conforms and usually what ke- what stops you is your brain because your brain, you're not used to the sensations. Like, I mean, we were looking at that x-ray. It was like, Amen I mean, your butt can that. stretch out pretty far. So um, I guess when he was sedated, she was able to like get her hands in there oh my God. and then move, move everything out of the way. And she said she had these really long scissors and she Wait. was able to cut the dildo apart oh, and wow. pull it out. Like, wow. yeah. that's insane. Yeah. I oh, mean, but they got me, yours like, out in one piece. Yeah. That's even piece. well, amazing. because they really, all they had to you do with mine one piece. was snare it. Like they just had to snare it to, Oh, uh, so there was like a hole in it, it out. Like, gotcha. well, no, I think that like, they probably just needed to go in with like, you know, like just really Forces. actually very simple tools. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, just like a little snare. But it's easy to do if you're like under. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that they have like cameras and things yeah. like that. And, um, you know, I mean, it was just like, I mean, that was Colin Lord couldn't help me because they didn't have the right tools. And so with this other place too. So it, you know, it boils down to, yeah, wow. whatever. You gotta have the right tools, man. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Tracy used to tell me some great stories, like just about the lungs and like pancreas and all. I mean, again, like being a medical, like, you know, I, I like, I just, I, I love medical stuff. Like, yeah. I just think it's really interesting. And I think of it. Our bodies are so fascinating. I almost think of yours as if you had like a wine decorker because like it's like a cork stuck in there and you can't just pull it out but if you have like a cork screw it's yeah. broken off you're like shit yeah. <laughs> you're like where's that Similar. goddamn where's, where's, that, a where's that wine screw? key yeah like I don't have the wine key it's like yeah you know like you just gotta get a nice grip in there and yeah woo. Well, I mean, I'm glad that everything worked out. Yeah, me too. You um, lived to a tell the ago. tale. Did they, did they, when, they, when they took, when you it's took like the, six or seven years ago now at this point. Wow. Oh shit! Yeah. When you took the dildo home, did they, what kind of was it? Like a medical bag? Or yeah, it, it was a, bag? it was like a biohazard like, bag. <laughs> and, and, they, and she was very nice. She had like washed it out for me, and you know, I mean, it was just there. It just wasn't it's inside another, me anymore. It's another Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. So. I think you should l- one day just get a double ended bil- dildo and a biohazard bag and frame that. Fucker. <laughs> just frame it and yeah. just be like, well, evidently well, that cool story I just told you that Tracy said that hey, the guy's girlfriend was pissed off because he wasn't supposed to do stuff like that without her. And so I guess like she was going to come into town the next day and I guess he was horny and, you know, started playing with Couldn't the toy. Wait. And so she was mad at him. So she told Tracy, she was like, she's like, yeah, I'm going to frame that stuff because I'm going to put it on the wall and be like, that's what you get for not waiting. And, you know, oh, oh it's my funny. God. Too good. Yeah. Wow. Woof. Uh, should we go into Let's Get Shitty? Yeah. Um, Do you have, Let's Get Shitty is our um, part where we complain about something. It can be <laughs> pooper farts related or it could be anything. So I was going to play the intro and then we'll get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for Let's Get Shitty! Yes, the part where we complain about things. Yes. Um, I can't even remember. There was something that happened. I'm sorry. You should be going first. Uh, or if you want, you don't have to. You can. No, you, I mean, I, I talked for a nothing, while, so to, okay. I can think about what I want to yeah, complain yeah. about. Um, Go ahead, Dave. You started. Thank you. I guess I just, just jump right into that. Uh, you have something that's on, well, no, on the tip well, of your tongue I, that you have I, to complain I thought, about? I thought there was something. I was trying to remember that this morning. I had I should have wrote it down. But yesterday, we were coming back from Coney Island. And we're on the G train. Those of you who don't live in New York, the G train is its like a unicorn. It just it, <laughs> like You're like, oh my God, it's here? What? It just takes forever. So anyway, It's like the only train that also doesn't go into Manhattan. Yeah. Right. So we're on the G train going back home. And, you know, it's late. I just want to just be in bed. Uh, and so this woman with her kid are just sitting on the, like, holding the door. And it wasn't like the normal, like, let me hold the door for, like, you know, two seconds. seconds. Yeah. No, she's like, come on. Like, she's yelling at her friend, come on, come on. 
the person's downstairs, like running up the stairs. Oh, Jesus. And now it's like almost a full minute, which doesn't seem like a long time, but it's but a, long a long time. time. No, for yeah. a subway. To fuck up a subway. Because yeah. that means you're going to script everything there. Yeah. yeah. So. I, I just was I just couldn't let it go of my mind. I'm just going like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Just you know what? You missed the train. It happens to everybody. Yeah. Just wait for the next one. Yeah. But this person just had to fucking let everybody like you know, they're they're too important to miss this train. Mm-hmm. But it was ridiculous. It was it was a full minute at least. I mean, the doors kept closing and opening, closing and opening, and people were kind of like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just I hate people that hold the doors for like a ridiculous amount of time. I mean, we've all done it. I have. But it's more like a quick, like little, like you know, someone's like right behind me as a door. Like, you put your foot in there, you know. But this was just, it was egregious. That was um. It's like that New York City syndrome I call it, where it's like you are the most important person in the world, yeah. and whatever it is you're doing mm-hmm. is the most important thing in the world. It's so like, everybody should accommodate you and what yeah. you need, yeah. rather than like it's you like, know. Need to the thousands of people on this train. Yeah. I just need to get to like where I'm going. Right. So um, you know, you can all fuck off. Yeah. Is basically, yeah. what she's saying. So. It just drove me nuts. And there was like no sense of like, you know, oh, I'm really sorry. Did you t- yell at them? No, I wanted to, but I didn't. Oh. I mean, what am I going to say? L- I mean, Leave not, the door alone, now, fucker. It's like, now it's going to start recording right when I'm just yelling at this person. <laughs> and they're going to be like, I don't want to do the problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people watching at home are going to be like, this guy's a fucking Did ass. Did the conductor <laughs> like make an announcement or yes, anything? Because they usually get really You should pissed, just record like, that to like submit it to Subway Creatures. Yeah. I should have. But What's it was, and then, uh, oh, it's an Instagram. It's, it's a great fantastic. feed. But, oh, I'll check it well, out. the funny part too is there was a guy who worked for the MTA sitting directly across from when all this was happening. He's just kind of looking up from his phone like daggers. And I was like, and he didn't say anything. No, he didn't say anything. He's probably like, I'm off the clock, man. Yeah, I'm not, like, exactly. You know, I'm not dealing with this. But anyway, yeah, that was my But I think people bank on that here in the city sometimes. Oh, that whole, like, you know, no one's going to say anything because nobody wants to get, like, stabbed. But but (laughs) then there's that one one crapshoot that's sort of like, you know, the one person who's just, like, a little nutty who has to say everything. And then it turns into, like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And now we're all the audience. So we're we're all involved. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. But that's why Subway Creatures is so great. Subway Creatures is a great um, feed. Check Um, it out. I my let's get shitty is a couple weeks ago I had a photo shoot then I went to a movie with a friend of mine we went to Nighthawk and I got two things of popcorn there to split with my friend Mm. because it's so fucking good I was like I'm going to get a second one because it's half off for refills Um, and when we left I was like I got to stop by Whole Foods to grab something and it's the Whole Foods in Williamsburg that has an elevator so I walked to the normal elevator to get to go up in it and I was like so tired from the shoot and like watching kind of an emotional movie um, and this l- woman stands next to me and we're both like waiting for the elevator and then I look up and there's a sign that says oh this elevator's out of order go use the other one and I was like oh my god I'm, I'm half asleep I didn't even pay attention to the sign that's like right there and I turned to her and I was like oh shit and she was like oh yeah I didn't even see it either so we walk over to the ele- elevator and I just turned to her and I was like oh my god I'm tired and she goes yeah be- it's probably because of the baby And I looked down and (laughs) she thought I was pregnant. Are you fucking serious? (laughs) Oh, that's not, that is fucked up. I I just turned and I go, no, I'm fat. (laughs) What did she say? The look on her face, she turned beat bright red. And she had a, like some kind of Eastern European accent. And she's like, oh, no, 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 uh, no, no, you're not fat. You're not fat. Oh, my God. What do you do? Do you live around here? She was like, all of a sudden, my new best friend. And I wanted to. <laughs> I, oh. The person I saw the movie with, I text them. And I was like, I guess I didn't need that second oh. bowl of popcorn. <laughs> that is fucked up, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry that happened to you. I just was like, no, I'm fat. Thanks. <laughs> I had that happen on the subway too, where I offered my seat to somebody because I thought they were pregnant, and they were like, um, "By the way, I'm not pregnant." And I was like, "Oh, I'm you're like, sorry. but here you go, a seat. yeah, there you have a seat now, though." Like, you oh. know, so that's like after that, I never assume anyone's pregnant. Like, yeah. I'm just like, unless you tell me, like, I'm just like, I'm I never like, offer my seat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> I don't think I've ever offered my seat to a pregnant person, but I have offered it to people with little kids or elderly. Little kids, yeah, elderly I always people. offer it yeah. to old people. Like li- people with little kids, sometimes I'm like, I'm like, you can stand. <laughs> like there are well, times where yeah. I'm like, well, if you it's can, one like, mother really with tired. like three to four yeah. kids, oh, yeah, like, no. then I offer the seat. Yeah. Oh no, if I see if I see someone with like a baby carriage, I'm like, eh, that's your choice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I do think thinking about selfish assholes in New York, I do think I'm sorry. I I am not a parent. Neither we are pet parents of anything. But yes, making a child a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of time is a choice. So don't try to act like you're better than me because you chose to bring this person and that the world revolves around you. When they were talking about the straight pride parade, like that's happening, what was happening in Boston. Like that's what I kept telling everybody. I was like, you want to see a straight pride parade? It's like, just walk down the street with someone with a stroller. And then like, that's, that's pretty much a straight because like you have to get out of their way and you have to like, you know, I mean, there's definitely a like, there's like a privilege. Like, don't you, isn't my baby's especially like no not really um i mean at the end of the day like i I can respect parenting because you know raising a kid is not easy and you know especially if you're doing it right you know but it's just one of those things like you chose to have a kid right you know it's like but don't make my life about your kid yeah no but no not about that but don't make my life less valuable because you chose to be a mother right we're we are all in the same value. Your kid, you and me are worth exactly the same amount. Right. So don't treat me like a lesser person because I didn't procreate. Yeah. Go fuck off. Yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. I just, my favorite thing is when I see people with baby carriages on the train and they always go carriage first and like I guess you don't like your kid cuz <laughs> those doors are like kids are like, <laughs> going to slice your kid into. Yeah, it's like in twain. You're like little little Trevor. Yeah, you know, it's unfortunate. But um, anyway, so that was a good one. But that's I mean, fucked up. <laughs> I've been holding on to oh that God, one for weeks now up, to do it in my let's get shitty. It's like no, I, I'm just fucking fat. <laughs> you should have been like, yeah. Mm. I don't really have a shitty um, subway story because there seems to be a theme with that. I know I do somewhere, but I can't think of it right now. But I could just say, like, not going into anything specific since we were talking about specifics earlier. But I would say something that's that that I want to complain about, but I guess also just get people to be aware of is, you know, we're in this like crazy Trump time right now, and I get it. Like, people are freaked out, and people are are you know, there's very real problems we're all dealing with, but. I am annoyed that there aren't more solution based um, uh, problem solving or conflict oh, yeah. solving things 100. happening right now. So uh, I find that that that's kind of been my thorn in my side for the last couple years is that I'm just like, you know, maybe voting this person off the island is not the way to do it. Like, well, I mean, he's the he's the result. There's a whole systemic pro- problematic thing that's been going on for years brewing. It's not like, you know, he just popped up out of nowhere. Right. So I think you're right. No, you're right. It's just like, yeah. yeah, we can, there's a face to it. Yeah. But it's just more like, you know, yeah, once he's and I guess gone, I'm talking like, about still have to deal with like yeah I mean I'm talking about more when I think you're dealing with your own people yeah. like yeah. when you're dealing with your community with the people that are close to you because you know people on your side ultimately yeah. like you might not be a hundred percent on the same page but you're at least in the same chapter or the same book yeah so like you know that stands for something because you know there's some people out there who want us all dead and you know oh, yeah. I mean and there's no way we're going to convince them no. so it's like okay well if your method is to vote people off the island and then you know who's going to be left on the island and then what are you going to do when you know something real actually happens on like you know the other side like tries to attack you I was like guess what there's going to be no people there to help you yeah. because like you know you were too busy you know being a purist and um, well, there's no yeah. A little so area. I guess my thing is that I'm just you know I'm I, I just am a big believer that love is limitless and um, forgiveness is powerful. Like forgiveness is a really powerful thing, like for both sides. And you know it. And I think people forget that sometimes because I think that they think that if they let go of their anger or resentment that you know they're not going to be interesting or whatever and i mean i just sort of feel like if you take a step back and you're just like you know what i'm just going to forgive this and let it go and then uh, just the peace that comes after that and like all that weight is off your shoulder it's like you know it's like you're suffering now because of the the fact you're holding all this in for for how long the way someone described resentment to me was uh, resentment is like eating the poison hoping it'll kill the rat 
Yeah. And once that, that there was something that, went, that just like really uh, cut through me. Yeah. So, um, so you know, and then the way to combat that is with gra- gratitude. Yes. So, you know, for instance, I am extremely grateful to know you both yeah. and to be on uh-huh. this uh, podcast. So, and it just, uh, and to talk about something really lighthearted. And we've talked about a couple of serious things too, but, you know, it's just a good experience. So, thank you. No, thank, oh, you. thank you. Yeah. It was a great, great um, interview episode. Yeah, thanks so far. Yeah, it was fan. I mean, full of stories. you were out of the gate with oh, pooping yeah. your pants less. I mean, we love you for that. Yeah, <laughs> it just. So I mean, funny. we could have ended the episode right yeah. then and there. <laughs> like, All right, thank you for this shortest episode. A fantastic <laughs> one. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, did we play the "Let's Get Shitty"? Um, yeah, I played it. Oh my god, I'm so out of it. It's okay. Sorry. I mean, you might be pregnant because you're pregnant. Oh, it's I'm sorry, I'm pregnant. Yeah. It's the baby, Ellen. <laughs> yes, they make you a baby, hysterical yeah, woman because you know <laughs> you can't hear or process yeah. thoughts. <laughs> yeah, didn't you know? I mean, just... you might get the vapors. You need to lay down. Yeah, the vapors. <laughs> I just put you on the couch over here if you want. You I re- killed record. the rabbit. I just taught everybody at camp what that term means because you know pregnancy tests back in the day was you would inject urine into a rabbit and then dissect them, and if their ovaries grew big, that means the person <laughs> was pregnant. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, that That's was insane. the pregnancy well, test. I've heard the pregnancy test in Egypt, the one that was like you know if you took the two different seeds and then peed in it, then like if the one seed germinated, you were pregnant, and then if the other one did, then you weren't. Oh. I I, like and it actually there is scientific proof that wow. it actually works wow. like or it was effective at least um huh. more times urine than is not. powerful yeah yeah man that baby pisses yeah baby urine <laughs> in in utero urine <laughs> <laughs> um so we're going into the news do you yes. have to play the op- yeah the- i'm gonna play the open i'm gonna play the shorter one i think though oh let's see i like the short one Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, that was perfect. Actually. Breaking wind. Good evening. This is the news. Uh, so this story, um, I forgot who sent this to me. And I always forget. To, I want to give credit where credit's to you, but this is um, a story that comes from us from Australia. And the title reads, man loses feeling in his legs and nearly dies due to colossal poop. <laughs> Um, and the the medical scan of this poop looks like I mean it's ridiculously huge. Uh, so I've been kind of looking. It, I've been kind of looking at oh, this on the side, yeah. but it's, wow, it's disgusting. Uh, doctors in Australia. How he didn't die? Well, yeah. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Like, yeah. I mean, this guy. Some some doctors in Australia um, had intervened with a man had come into their hospital because he was um, he was so constipated his fecal matter gave him paralysis in one of his legs. Uh, they don't give names here, which I'm sure is for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the 53-year-old man took himself to the emergency room with abdominal pain that had been building for three days. Three days of this. Wait, he had that much shit for three days? Well, I mean, this has probably been going on for a while, but this yeah. this is probably the result I mean, didn't of, we learn that six weeks of constipation yeah, is, well, will kill you? He. I mean, my guess is he's probably... This had been going on for a long time because if you saw, I mean, you can't see this on, you know, obviously you can't see this. Well, you can see it on our Instagram, but, Hey Poopy. But it's it's it's, it's significant. <laughs> so anyway, he's became so impacted. Um, but basically, like he was, he was, he was for three days he was going through swelling, nausea, and he couldn't feel his leg. The doctors had touched it. There was no sense of um, you know touch or anything. He couldn't feel anything. Um, no palpable pulse, and it was cold to the touch. Jesus. Yeah. He so, lo- almost lost you know, his leg. Yeah, they did a whole it battery. Basically, tourniqueted yeah. his leg. Essentially. Oh my! So I'm getting to the exact <laughs> the exact medical thing of what happened. But basically, they were like they went through his medical history, couldn't find any kind of drug taking, any kind of disease, vascular disease, um, no significant medical history at all. And then basically, it just turns out he really had to take a shit. Well, but they said not a shit, the, the shit, shit yeah. of all like, shits. Um, that's like the mad shitter from Jason's episode. Yeah, like, no, that's 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 what I thought of. It's a I'm, brick. That's what I thought of. <laughs> so they were saying Excuse that they me. did a rectal examination and they had he had impacted stools. Oh my god! And it was so much. That it was a massive fecal compaction that um, was potentially life threatening. Um, his whole <laughs> abdominal area was like all just like a mess. 
And, I mean, um, wouldn't you know, like, I haven't taken a shit in a week. Well, that's Maybe the thing. Maybe something's going on. Yeah, like, but it's just like some people, like we were talking about before you got here, like, just, you know, this whole idea of like, you know, I could just grit through it. I'm just probably a little, you know. Shame. Yeah, shame. I mean, this I think it's probably some shame. That's you know. beyond shame, shame to me. If I don't shit for a whole day, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. And I look pregnant. <laughs> oh, yeah, apparently. Um, well, the scan had revealed that he'd become so backed up that it had distended his large intestine and put so much pressure on his right iliac artery. And this particular artery controls, like, you know, pain <laughs> in your leg. So, as well as paralysis. So, um, yeah, it was really bad. He was taking the surgery right away to remove the backlog of fecal matter <laughs> to relieve his abdominal pressure. Um, I mean, it's just so crazy. General anesthesia, though. Two liters of feces were removed. I know, oh I know, we, I know, we're not God. in the metric. Um, well, that's like a this country, soda. but that's a, a two-liter bottle of yeah, like, it's yeah, like a Coke soda. Yeah, whatever. you essentially passed a a, a liter of like Isn't that a, insane? two liter of Coke. a two-liter yeah. bottle. Yeah, yeah. that's Shit. massive. That's massive. Well, yeah. that's what I was telling. That's more Dave than a brick. When we were looking at this X-ray, as I was like, it's I mean, a like, testament to how elastic <gasps> your butt is. Yeah. Yeah, and also, you know, going back to the shower attachment, if this guy had had a shower attachment, yeah. he probably could have shot some water. Problem. I mean, I think at this point it needed oh, no. medical intervention, this, but, like, I mean, before. This like, asteroid I'm yeah. looking at right now would have, there's no, well, no water would have done anything to this thing. That well, obviously he water. wasn't it's drinking like, enough like, water please, either. Have you seen me? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, this guy, this, this dude's a mess. I mean, literally, <laughs> he's a mess, and figuratively. So basically, yeah, they were just like, they, were, they said the doctors were unsure of the cause of this buildup. But I'm like, I'm sure he was constipated, probably ate like shit. Yeah. He needed pure for men. He needed to drink a lot of water. He needed to realize that if you go so many days without shitting, you have a serious problem. Well, they, they referenced a story from 2015 in this story that um, a teenage girl with a phobia of toilets died after holding in a bowel movement for eight weeks. Oh, wow. The buildup led her chest cavity. Um, sorry. The buildup led to her chest cavity becoming compressed, and eventually she died from a heart attack. Oh my oh god! God, poor thing. Yeah, man. Yeah, so sad. That's intense. Well, you hear those stories about like um, there was like a natural disaster in Japan of some kind, and I remember reading there was an article because they they like in a lot of their stalls, you know, they have noises and things like yeah. that. Yeah. So it's like because there's a lot of shame associated with pooping. Right. And so in that situation, in the survival situation, there were a lot of people getting sick because they didn't want to poop in front of other people. So I mean it's just it's like Yeah man, you know, you gotta get over that. It's yeah, like, like at a certain point, like I mean again, it's like what I said, it's the great equalizer. Yeah. It's like, yeah. okay, I gotta poop guys, sorry. Like, yeah. you know, and, well, I mean, Gerald talks about that being in um, jail for a couple days. Like, there's literally a toilet in the m- middle of the corner and, like, 12 to 20 guys in the same, yeah. like, pen. And he goes, after a couple days, you're going to watch one of those, or all of those guys take a shit. Yeah. Right. It, it'll happen. Right. I mean, that's like my story at CBG was I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do it. The toilet in the men's room was just a toilet on two steps. Uh, up, No <laughs> lid. No, like, no door. rim, no, nothing. No door, no stall. Just, like, this white room with no front door and a toilet just sitting on top. Like, no water in it, even. That was the toilet. So I just went to the women's um, bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, Fuck that's this. ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and before we end the episode, I just want to do a quick um, update. The last episode, I thought somebody stole my camera from oh, yes. ButtCon, but it ended up, I found it. I went back to the location and found said camera. Yay. Um, but, however, somebody did steal my fart machine. <sighs> oh, yeah. But we know who... We but actually- I know who stole it, but I don't want to say whose name, but the person's partner outed them to me like a week <laughs> later, and I was like, oh, my God, that's my fart machine. So I am getting back oh, the fart we'll machine. We'll have the fart machine back for the next episode. But it's like the the <laughs> fart machine that's pretty much on every episode at the end, and it's the fart machine that I've had since the first episode. Yeah, that was that was our sound effect for like. Yeah, that was before the before, iPad. Before we had all the drops. We had yeah, we I've had Ellen's fart stuff. machine. Yeah, it was so, like that was our high tech. Um, it was it's our favorite part of the show. Actually, I love when you my little fart it. machine. The fart machine is great. It's so funny. Yeah. I like thought somebody stole a thousand dollar camera, found it. Thank God. 
but they did steal my yeah, your five dollar fart machine. <laughs> That's so good. She That's called so me. She's funny. like, she's like, you're not gonna fucking believe this. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of started laughing my ass off. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. But um, Matt Knife, thank you so much. Matt Knife, you oh, were for a genius. Having you. You're fanca- thank you're you fantastic. on so many levels. Thank um, you. You, yeah. you. You brought it. Thanks. As no, th- as I said, thank you for the opportunity. This yeah, is of super course. fun. Um, this is the fun. best. Where can we find you? Um, sell your artwork, everything. You can find me on Instagram, uh, Matt Knife Three. Uh, my art is a separate. It's Matthew Z Kessler uh, art, um, and they both pop up pretty quickly um i will have my website up soon uh which there'll be links on my social media cool. but instagram is pretty much like uh i've capped out of uh facebook yeah <laughs> uh like i have five thousand friends now like f- quotation figure friends um so facebook isn't as reliable as it was but uh instagram uh, it's just more fun anyway. yeah so yeah i think it's um, what most people are yeah find things, and so. i mean it's all like i always tell people it's all the fun of facebook without the drama <laughs> so yeah. uh, you know so yeah Instagram excellent we have to have you on our <laughs> shitty burlesque ep- our city burlesque oh please if, yeah. you need a, if you need a we hostess have, well, yeah. so far we have there's four there'd be four acts right now already so yeah. we might have yeah, a yeah. show now yeah, yeah. so and yeah, I'm sure if you put a call out like there are people that like would do something yeah. like I think doesn't I mean, I'm um, sure faux pas we could probably get faux, faux pas, pas yeah and um, Dolly she's David oh Dolly Wood I think no. it's Dolly Wood I think she has a um an act from Bob's Burgers, the girl that farts, all the Tammy. Aww. I think oh, she has really? a Tammy number, oh, okay. which is pretty fun. Um, oh, James Ridley. Yes, that's it. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. James. Yeah, yeah, yes, but, yes, did I say Bill? Dumb. Oh, sorry. That's James okay. is taking beautiful pictures of me, by the way. Yeah, but yeah James is James's girlfriend. Yeah, Dolly. Yeah, Dolly. Okay. Yeah, she she has a wife. Really, actually, they're married. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I did know that. But, um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, we should reach with, out. Uh, DJ Dirty Donuts and <laughs> Joey Easton might have to come up with acts for this show. I could just, I'll just DJ. Maybe I'll just DJ. Rosewood. You could have Rosewood. Oh I mean, God, yeah. That'd be brilliant. Rosewood seems expensive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she might surprise you. Okay. Well, maybe, you. you know, we'll see. That would, but, it would be brilliant. Yeah. So all the listeners out there, look out for that show. Yeah. That, that, that's going to be gonna You be can doozy. put it up on our YouTube. Yeah. It's going to be a doozy. Oh, that would be a blast. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe at that point, if it was, if it's, pretty graphic we could start a patreon and people would have to pay, pay for, for it, it. <laughs> yeah oh, shit i just realized you're right i didn't play the toilet flush oh you asked me for the theme song we forgot to play the toilet flush for um, oh to flush our problems yeah. away so we're, we're retroactively going back uh, to let's get shitty it's been a while since we've been recorded i know we haven't um we're off our game a little bit i'm a little and sleepy then, i feel like i have a, like a five day hangover from camp it's because i'm pregnant <laughs> with camp so, babies you gotta put your feet up oh i do have a really funny story about camp and pregnancy <laughs> not me okay well but i'll say it off off yeah, mic yeah. it's a really good one well, we're gonna real quick we're gonna end the show with a, with a nice cathartic toilet flush so uh here we go flushing it all yeah. away <laughs> We've cleared the space. (laughs) I like it. And with that, thanks for listening. And uh, we'll be back next next week. week. Yeah. So thanks for listening. And um, until next time. Happy pooping and toot toot toot. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to Shooting the Shit with Dave and Ellen. You can listen to us on platforms like iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and even YouTube. Please download, rate, review, and subscribe to any and all of those places and tell all your friends about us. For more about Shooting the Shit with Dave and Ellen, you can check us out at heypoopypodcast.com. For questions, product reviews, information, please email us at heypoopypodcast at gmail.com. And um, you can see us on Instagram at Hey Poopy Podcast. Theme song by Jordan Pearlson. Hey Poopy. Oh, that one's gross. <laughs> Very wet. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Oh no, I'm freaking this is Cow people, 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 cow people